audio. All right. Hello and welcome everybody to Learn to Play Fate. Um, thank you to all of the Fate SRD Patreons who helped make this happen. Uh, Amelia, you just turned to green again. So I think that's going to be something dang that we're going to be dealing with. Um, Amelia is having camera issues. Uh, so basically the <sighs> weird West mm -hmm. sessions always influence us with computer problems. <laughs> Spooky! Um, so last session, I wasn't able to talk periodically and as a GM who needs to do that. Um, but at least we can hear Amelia because sound is far yes. more important than the visuals in this, I think. So I, um, I, apo I apologize. It Everybody is... for coming on and off a of video. I'm trying to solve green, this. It's the green tent. <laughs> It is what it is. One hundred percent, no problem. Um, okay. Right now, yes. So, all right. Let's see. I'm just making sure that all of the things are popped open here that I need for today's game. Oh, I might um, need some help getting into the Fari app. I don't know if you're going to walk everyone through that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm definitely okay. going to walk cool. everybody through cool. that. Um, I like. I've had conversations with a guy who does Fari, and I'm going to be doing some um, user experience work to Ooh, to help nice. make that experience better. Uh, because okay. we want to kind of bring the Fari app and the Fate SRD together a little bit more. So awesome. I want to. I want to contribute to that project to make that project better because it's off to an awesome start. Um, One hundred percent. Um, let me turn my notifications off because suddenly I'm now getting notifications all the time. You would think oh, I would have done this in advance, but I spent too long setting up my computer. All right. Amelia, you're, you're looking less green. So that's Yay. Great. Okay. That's and great. Yeah. I tried a different no, input. Now you're so. green again. <laughs> are you, are you serious? Okay. I am not joking. It's fine. Oh, listen, Christ. Listen. Okay. I have another it's webcam. Kind of like, it's kind it. of an Andy Warhol thing, honestly. It's not yeah, that bad. And, yeah, and I mean, like, we know your secret is you're always angry. So. <laughs> well, and heck, for all the colors for it to be, it might as well be green. I remember the, the guy on the, yeah. the tree. Oh, yeah. The green yeah, the eyes. guy with the green yeah. eyes. Yeah, that's so funny. Perfect. Yeah. I'm going to need my other webcam, though, real quick. It's literally right here. Okay, yeah, you go ahead and do that. Um, and that's cool. You, uh, we're going to talk through what we're going to start with. Um, weirdly, hold on. I hit Zoom, and now it's, there we go. Um, oh, man. I need to do a lot more streaming um, so I can get my experience down. Anyway, all right. So let's talk about this Weird West session. So um, the first thing that I'm going to walk us through is I'm going to walk us through Fari and setting everything up in Fari. Okay, Fari, yeah. if you're not aware, is uh, Fari.app is a an online tool for playing Fate. Okay, um, it differs from like Roll20 and other such virtual tabletops in that it is built explicitly for Fate. Um, this is my first time playing with it, so I will probably stumble over a few things, uh, but I figured that I would give it a go so that we can see how it works out. And I'm also going to personally be taking like mental notes as we go through this so that I can contribute to the user experience of Fari um, gotcha. so that we can make it better. Um, after we do that in Fari, everyone will have their character set up in Fari, which means that then we're going to get to the next part. The next part is that we're going to cover like milestones. Um, and it sounds really big to say milestones, but honestly, milestones between every fate session, you can make like little adjustments to your characters. And we're going to talk about that. Um, I'm also giving you guys a fourth aspect so that your characters can, can get a little bit more robust based on what happened last time. If you're so interested, um, and then after we're done with that, I want to introduce one new rule for today's game, um, just so that we can kind of reinforce the tone that we're going for today. Um, and then we're going to get straight to the game. So that's our plan and our outline. If anyone is following along in the chat, please ask any questions and I'm happy to answer them. So the first thing is in Fari. Um, uh, what we need to do, I provided everyone with a link in Discord to the active Fari. Um, uh, if you head to discord, um, and scroll up a little bit, I had posted it just at about like 1238. Um, if you click on it, it will take you to a page that says, Hey, what's your name to join this, this game? Um, enter in your name, not your character name. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it can just be your first name or a Nick, whatever you'd like to, um, and just get into Fari. So if everyone could do that now. Um, that would be great. I see that Dylan has joined and Josh has joined. Um, uh, Amelia, I'm... Yes, I know. what's your name? Amelia, I am off yeah. the link. Let's see. Right. There okay. we go. 
All right, so now everybody is listed in here. Um, and there. now what, what we wanna do is we wanna get your characters in there. So um, I didn't wanna take the time for everybody to enter everything for their characters here because that, that takes a long time. Um, one weird thing about Fari is that because you're not logging in, um, there's no database that's tracking things. Mm. Um, it's all kept in your browser um, and your browser stores all of that information, like the database in the browser. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's a really good solution um, that solves like not needing a database, which means that the um, the the guy behind Fari doesn't have to pay for database uptime. Um, also, we're not being tracked. That's great. Well, Yay. there's that too. Yeah. Um, the downside is that like if you clear your browser's cache, um, all of it your preparation everything. goes away. It just goes away. Um, so you can export your what you need. Um, and so what I did was I went in and created everybody's characters and exported them. They exported as JSON files, which if you're a nerd, you know how great that is. If you're not, don't worry. It's just great. Um, <laughs> in the, I passed to all of you in discord, I passed, um, a link. It is pinned in our channel that links to a notion document. Okay. Um, at the very top, it says January 2021 Fade SRD. It's got a bunch of links and details, um, basically all of our notes for today. Um, if you open up under the, we will be using Fari app as our game board. If you open up the second toggle, which is how to import your character sheet into Fari, um, you will see under there, there are like four um, attachments. It's got a little um, paper clip next to them. Um, click on your character and download that document. Um, you may need to right click to save it to your desktop or downloads or wherever you need. Yeah. But basically you, you need that JSON file um, so that you can upload it into Fari. Um, so yep. everybody let me know when you've downloaded that file successfully. Should it download it as an HTML? No. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say. Up, yeah, it opens yeah, up a new window too. for me. Yeah, um, web page complete. Uh, yeah, if you right click and download. Oh, so if you're, if you're, should I just do yeah. copy? No, 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 so if you're in the no. new window, if you're in the window, it opens when you left click uh -huh. it and you right click uh, the screen and save as, yeah. it'll be a JSON file. Cool, yeah, that oh. was my problem is I was, yeah, it was letting me, me save, but not as a JSON. I was like, yeah, what is it not? Okay, here we yeah, go. And I, it. yeah, and I know that got this it. is super technical, but. Um, no, it's fine, uh, just to get like, yeah. yeah. This, this is, now. yeah, this is one of the things that I'm going to be working with the Fari folks about um, to try and make this um, more easily, more easily understood. Um, and it looks like the Reverend understands how to connect uh, stuff. So what you're going to do is in your, there we go. Um, there you go. All right. So it looks like everybody's catching on, which is great because that means. Well, uh, hold on. I just need sure. a little bit of, okay. Okay. I see what, where it is. Um, yes. Yeah, it has. This. The one thing I've noticed, it's not imported that I can see the plus one skills. Uh, that might. For anybody? Uh, let's see. Opening up. Um, no, the plus one skills are actually there. If you open up your character sheet. Oh, okay. You'll they're see just them. not listed on top. They're okay. not. They're not listed on That's the little fine. cards because like I, I, you know, that would be a very nice thing to be able to set and say like, hey, I want to see all skills or you know, whatever the case might be. Um, yeah. So, so Dylan, there should be a little um, plus icon next to your name off to the left in Fari. Yeah. Okay. If you Just click on, okay, sure. Okay. Import. Um, I'm having a little trouble getting the, it's, it's in the post. You said it's a, it's one of the pin messages, which one. Oh, I tell you what, let me go ahead. I will um, just, cause yes, I, it's here. Yeah. Let me, what I will do is I will post, you are not Herbert, uh, you are John Darrington. Let me, I will get the file and I will send it to you. Um, yeah, I, I apologize. It's just, it's. It is. Um, yeah. Not a problem. It is absolutely not All a problem. Right. Like I said, this is um, super like weird. Okay. Uh, all right, so I just posted the the dot JSON file into Discord, so you should be able to download it directly to okay. your system and then upload it as your character. Alrighty. 
All right. Um, so a couple of things for everybody to notice. Um, on the left is basically the list of everybody who is kind of in the game. So you'll see that there's Game Master, which is me. Um, you'll see that Anit has a little like guy with his hand in the air or their hand in the air. Um, that means that like I'm waiting for your turn. And then if you click it, which I just clicked Game Master, oh, gotcha. it turns into a little running dude that says, hey, you know, you've taken your turn already. Um, so yeah. that's how we're going to know if someone has gone during initiative because oh, we, cool. we, we're going to continue to use like um, the like Marvel style popcorn elective action. There's so many names for it. Style initiative. <laughs> Sorry. Um, to the uh, underneath FP, that's fate points. Um, everybody's going to start with three. I know last session was started with two. That's because last session was going to be shorter. This one's a little bit more of a standard length. So everybody gets three. Um, the plus and minus that are underneath there is remove and add a fate point. So when you spend a fate point, remove one. When you add, a, when I give you a fate point, um, uh, add one. Um, whenever I say you get a fate point or I compel you or something like that, I'm going to assume that you are managing your own fate points. So I won't hit plus or minus for your fate points unless you explicitly say, hey, I need you to do that for me. Um, that, way, that way we don't end up with like people double clicking and things of that nature. Sound make sense? Mm -hmm. So um, left clicking or moves a fate point. How do you add a fate point? There yeah. are buttons underneath. There's a plus and minus. Uh, I do not. No, I just, yeah, I just see the circle. Oh, I just see the thing where it says points. Okay. Uh, I guess Fari is about the GM controlling fate points. So everything I just said was a lie. And <laughs> I will uh, deduct and add fate points for you. So I mean, I can um, I can remove fate I'm points from myself. Yeah. I just can't add Okay. Them. All right. Well, then. Sure, me um, and the Rev are starting off with right. nothing. Yeah. Oh no! All right, well, here, here. Let me let me fix that for you. Oh no! Nope, Our many. fault. Sorry, we were tinkering too much. Well, no, tinker. That's how you learn. Yeah. Uh, all right. So everybody's character sheets are in there. Um, if you click on the little like um, I don't know, floating head and shoulders person icon um, that says "Open Character Sheet" whenever you hover over, it will open mm. your character sheet. This is um, cool. Yes. Oh. So uh, inside the character sheet, um, you there's your aspects, your stunts, uh, your amount of refresh, the dice, um, the skills. Um, if you click on a skill, it will roll that skill. Yeah, I just um, did that. That was awesome. Yeah. Consequences yeah. and stress. Um, if you need to make some changes, which we're going to do at the bottom, there are two buttons. On the left, there's toggle advanced mode. And on the right, there's save. Save does what you think it does. Toggle advanced mode, when you click it, makes things editable. So like if you want to reorder things or add or subtract things, you can do that. So for instance, under aspects, if everyone can go to aspects and the plus that is to the right of aspects um, and click on that, um, that will add a uh, fourth aspect, uh, rename it recap aspect, um, we have to what, turn on toggle advanced mode first? Yes, please toggle okay. advanced mode. Okay. Then where you see aspects, you'll see a little plus to be able to add another aspect. Um, and once you rename it to recap aspect, go ahead and toggle off advanced mode. Um, and then uh, you can hit save. Now, just to be clear, you can still edit character sheets um, without toggling advanced mode. Like for instance, you can go in and um, edit your aspects without toggling advanced mode. Advanced mode basically allows you to restructure the sheet itself, like adding an aspect like we just did. Um, and then lastly, if you close that character sheet, um, you can see on the um, on your cards that all of the skills are links. If you click on it, it will roll it for you. So That's for sweet. instance, I'm going to click on John Harrington's deceive. Uh, John Harrington got a six deceive. And if you hover over it, it will show you the dice and it will show you the skill um, and the amount from the skill. So for instance, um, that roll got two on the dice and a plus four deceive skill for a six result. Okay. Does that all make sense? Okay. Yeah, can okay. I have a, ask a question? Yes. Um, so what's the, because uh, I know physique modifies your stress boxes. How, what's the standard... What are you, what's the starting stress boxes that you have? The starting stress boxes that I have, um, uh, and I believe that I mentioned this during our, our previous session as well, but okay. it has been a long time. Um, we are using uh, condensed style stress boxes. 
Okay. So um, physique and will do not impact stress boxes okay. using that setup. So you get six stress boxes. You can check as many as you want to absorb incoming stress. Um, and you can uh, use one consequence to absorb incoming stress. So if, you, if you're if you taking 10 stress, um, you can mark all six boxes and the moderate consequence. Um, but you couldn't mark two consequences as a result of one um, one source of stress. So does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Um, I know that Fake Core has different stress tracks um, that are impacted by different skill ratings. Um, and I do like that. I, I like how Fake Core does it um, as well. But we're just for simplicity's sake, we kind of have gone with the Fake Condensed, the fake condensed route for this. Um, because I think that learning to play Fate, Fake Condensed style um, stress boxes make more sense. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So... Are there any questions about Fari? Everybody kind of got a good handle on updating, doing stuff with their character. I'm not hearing I any news. So. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. All right. If there are any questions, we can ask. Um, also, one of the, one of the fun things that I like is that like if somebody does something awesome, I can actually uh, put confetti everywhere. Did everyone see the? Oh, confetti? that's really ah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and then like if you mess up, I I can kind of throw this blood red <laughs> confetti around. That's great. It's, Bad it's, confetti. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's, Hooray. it's yes, it is. Uh, it is super awesome. Um, so, all right. So that is fairy and that is setting things up in fairy. Um, let's see. Oh, it's got dark uh, mode too. It does. I have oh, dark mode go. on right now so that my face doesn't Ooh. get like washed Ooh. out. Um, so yeah. Maybe I yeah. should do that. I'm looking a little oh, that's, washed that's out. Nice. Well, you're looking very green, so. Again? Uh, I switched uh, webcam. To it yeah, not to me either. For me, it's yeah, like. It, I literally switched uh, the webcam. For I, me, it's a uh, whenever you're heck? highlighted in the big screen, you're green. But when you're not, it's fine. Weird. That's mm-hmm. so weird. Yeah, literally, you turn green the moment you pop into like the main view. Why does zoom on? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> zoom is it's crazy. zoom at this point. Yeah, it's it's kind of oh, yeah. done a different. Oh, yeah. webcam yeah, no, and it's everything. totally zoom, and I've never <laughs> seen this happen before, and no one else is turning green. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, and I'm not like, seeing it at all. Like whether she's talking or not talking, I just don't. Oh even goodness! See it. It looks I normal. mean, I know my don't opinion worry. on her being green is confetti. <laughs> yeah, <it's fun. laughs> all right, so good stuff. Good stuff. Um, all right, so that's that's fair, fairy oh, setup. Fairy, fairy. I you know I keep going back and forth. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. Um, so now let's uh, let's talk about milestones. Um, yeah. So um, so. We are using fake condensed style milestones. So why are, why are we using fake condensed instead of fake core? Um, the reason for that is that fake core, fake cores milestones are perfectly fine. I've used them in two, two year long campaigns. Um, it has never been a problem. Excuse me. Sorry. There's not much of a difference um, between the two of them, but fake condensed is a little bit more clear and clean. And so I'm using those milestones. Um, in the document that I shared with you, uh, I included a link to the milestones. And so a milestone happens at the end of a session. So basically when a session ends and before the next one begins, um, you know, you're partway through dealing with a story arc and you can actually like adjust your character kind of laterally. Okay. To kind of move some things around. So what this means is that you can choose not to use a milestone. So like it's, if you're happy with, with what you have, you don't have to make any changes, but if you do, you can choose one of these things from this list. You can choose to switch the ranks of any two skills or replace an average skill with one that isn't on your sheet. Um, so this is one of those places where like, if, if you want to tweak your skills, you can tweak your skills a little bit. You can choose to rewrite one stunt. So if you have a stunt that, um, you want to change, um, either in a little way or completely rewrite, you can do that. Um, so basically what that means is that you can change a stunt from one to another. Uh, you may purchase a new stunt by spending one point of refresh, um, which means that you would then have two stunts, um, 
because that's how we've we've set up here. In a typical fake game, you start a game with three stunts. Um, we've kind of kept it a little bit more simple here um, for our learn to play fake game, but um, you may still buy a second stunt with refresh if you choose to. You cannot go below one refresh um, because then you just basically don't start a game with any fake points and it doesn't work out. Uh, you may also rewrite uh, one of your aspects except your high concept. So like if, if you want to tweak an aspect or if you want to remove it and add something else, you can absolutely do that. Now, um, this list of things, you can only do one from the list. So out of those four things, you can choose. And um, one of the things that um, uh, I would imagine that some GMs might have a problem with is like, oh, well, doesn't this lead to metagaming? Meaning that like, well, we we know that this session is going to be social focused. Um, so maybe I'll change my stunt from being like being able to shoot really well to being able to talk really well. Um, and like my opinion on that is that's what you're supposed to do. Like that's part of the game. Like gotcha. knowing what you know, like using your meta knowledge to make the game more fun is good. Like it can lead to like trying to power game things. Um, but in my experience, like if you've got a power gamer in fate, they're not really enjoying the best parts of fate. Um, you know, my opinion is that like the, the best fate players are the ones who are like getting like self compelling all the time, like driving their characters, like stolen cars. Like I like to say, um, <laughs> yeah, it so, seems like, um, it seems like what fate does well is like really leaning into dramatic irony, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Absolutely. like, and like building to big climactic moments where you just go, you know, push all your chips into the center. But also yeah. it almost seems like if someone is kind of gaming the system by flexing their character to fit the session better, that's probably just good. Like it, it's probably just good. It's probably just going to make the session better, even if they tend to be well equipped. Yeah. Uh, the example that I have is I ran a Musketeer Styles fake game. And at the end of one session, one of the players challenged like one of the bad guys to a duel. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And in between sessions, that player actually removed a stunt, like took the rewrite one stunt and, and just kind of like shunted the stunt that they usually had kind of like to a queue and then wrote another stunt for dueling to make the duel, like the duel at the beginning of the next session, like more interesting. Uh, and that really fed into it. And there, if you like, if you think in terms of like TV shows and episodes, like the characters do different awesome things in different episodes, yeah. you know, they're not always doing the same awesome things over and over again. And so like this being able to switch, you know, using that, like that meta knowledge, um, to make the game more fun, it should be perfectly acceptable. Um, so that's, that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about with milestones, because I know that, you know, some GMs don't like the concept of, of being able to like lean into like, oh, well, we know we're going to fight the evil wizard. So I'm going to take a stunt that lets me better fight an evil wizard. Well, I mean, you're going to go fight an evil wizard. Wouldn't you want to be more prepared for that? Um, so, yeah. So, so my, my understanding yeah. real quick is that it seems like this system is designed to offer milestone every session. Yes. These milestones okay. are in between every session. And Interesting. so, yeah. And yeah. all of this is basically just kind of like, it's like a shell game with your character, you know, <laughs> like um, I actually, in that Musketeers game that I mentioned, I had players who they had, they um, typically had three stunts. Sometimes players would buy a fourth stunt and generally kept like those three or four stunts, but they had a backlog of stunts that they had that were like in their queue of like, these are ones that I've used before. Um, and depending on what was going on in the story, they would like pull some of those from their history and make them active and moving other ones to inactive. Um, That's basically such like, a good idea. Yeah. 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 Because stunts and, are awesome. They really like really do, do make you do yeah. cool, unique, you know, new things. So why not? And, and, it, yeah. and it's interesting because this system, like this system, functionally almost simulates a higher complexity RPG, without mm -hmm. actually adding a whole lot of system complexity. You have to juggle, keeping it pretty flexible. But like, if you yeah. want to have a character that can do a lot of cool different things and has a lot of intricacy, it's mm -hmm. just on you to manage it in between sessions. 
Yeah, because one of the things that, like, uh, when we play, like, Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder, you're waiting for level up to get new abilities and new skills and new cool things. Whereas yeah. in Fate, like, every session you can bring something new to the table, potentially. Like, whether it's a different aspect or a different stunt, um, you know, uh, or shuffling skills around, you can really kind of start to, to do that. And the thing is, is if you have a character who has, like, a low skill, like, let's say you have a really bad athletic athletics and you wanted to play a character who was getting better at athletics like for instance like harry dresden from the dresden file novels who was really terrible at running in the first novel and has gotten really good at running by the end of the or by the current part of the series like you know in the first session like no ranks whatsoever second session you swap a plus one skill for athletics so now you have a plus one athletics then after a couple of sessions you you, you swap that plus one athletics for a plus two skill and you just start rolling that athletic skill up to like to to model getting better at athletics as your i mean other skills are coming down but um like over time, like technically across, I think it's five sessions, you could have a skill go from zero to hero, um, <laughs> you know, without, you know, having to worry too much about it. So it's it's really nice to have those organic changes. Yeah, I think as a player too, like I know I've done it with, I know you mentioned Dungeons Dragons and I don't mean to like, I guess that's because that's one of my only frames of reference. Reference, I don't mean to keep being like, oh, Dungeons and Dragons, um, but um, mm -hmm. I've like taken uh, skills or like spells or whatever, and I take them and I use them once and I'm like, oh, this sucks actually. And there's very little chance for you to swap yeah. things out yeah. in, in, in that game specifically. It kind of punishes um, experimentation. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I think this game rewards experimentation in that, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you try something, especially since you're writing them yourself and um, you know, you might write it and you're like, oh, this isn't actually going to be useful anytime soon or yeah. it, it just sucks you can just swap it out and it's okay <laughs> precisely yeah. and it doesn't and fit your character the, or whatever yeah and with yeah. with dungeons and dragons like it's not codified in the rules anywhere so a gm can say like listen you can't change spells until your class says that you can swap out spells and that sucks which um, yeah most gms that i know that's how they unless it's in the rule book with that sort of thing they're like mm, okay sorry oh, well. you took it yeah, uh, I guess I've you messed, messed up I've... your build. We'll talk, you know, have fun for the next two years in this campaign. <laughs> See, meanwhile, there was me who was, I'm like, listen, if you ever want to change your character because you've made bad choices, like, you talk to me you. and we'll do it. Like, as long as you're not doing it for cheese weasel reasons, you know. <laughs> And, and and we we make sure that your character concept is kind of the same. Like if you started off, you were a six level barbarian and suddenly you're like, oh, well, you know, I found God and now I want to be a cleric. And I'm, I would say like, OK, but we're not going to immediately swap you to, to straight cleric. You know, let's yeah. like let's you know, let's add a couple of levels of cleric for a session or two and then swap another couple of levels of cleric. And until yeah. you get to like that end point so that it feels more organic. None of that was in the rules, but I, I like I like my players to be able to play the characters that they want to play. Yeah. And, and like it's that. also cool that. Game. Yeah. Oh, and, and it's also cool that uh, there's still an opportunity cost to doing it. Um, you can't do it and other stuff you might want to do. And mm -hmm. also you can't change your whole character in one fell swoop. Like it, it's going to mm -hmm. take you five sessions to move this stat, which like in, in game, like five sessions is a long time. That's, yeah. that is like a lot of narrative distance you're traveling while you're, you know, doing a hundred pushups and a hundred sit-ups and running a kilometer every morning because you yeah. want to be one punch man by the end of the arc. That's, that's one fifth of my entire Monster of the Week campaign. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. like, yeah. 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 And, but the thing is, is like, if that's part of like the character story that you want to tell, yeah. like going yeah. from somebody who's really weak and gets like really hurt. And then by the end, their physique is their peak skill because yeah, of what happened cool. in like the first that's two such sessions. Cool story. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like besides and it, and like, all of the choices. Yeah. It opens a lot of cool, like narrative arcs into like redemption arcs and like atonement stories mm -hmm. and like a character who I, I think of like a, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, I think of maybe like Raceland from uh, Dragonlance, who like realizes very early on in the story that he wants to be someone very different, and then mm -hmm. plots a course to be that person. And that transformation is really dynamic. Like, and that's cool to be able to express in an RPG. 
without having to like think months and months ahead of time. Yeah. I mean, I know that like there were, I had players in uh, D and D back when I was playing a lot of third edition years ago um, who would have like, they actually made a 20 level progression sheet so that they could plot out their progression Dang. so that oh, they people could, still like, do like, that. Like yeah. you go on, you go on the really? D&D Reddit. Yeah. You go on the D&D like subreddit. See if people are like, how can I like, I'm going to multi-class this way. What order should wow. I take? Which is wild because like, like less than 1% of people even ever played a level 20. So why they're even doing that is like, is, is crazy. I, to me. I would argue that you honestly kind of have to, if you want to have like, a really good experience playing D and D. It it does like kind of demand that once you it, yeah, even, unfortunately. even like if you want to yeah. be a fourth level player, like you kind of have to look ahead unless you want to be in a really bad situation. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh we've talked a lot about milestones. Let's talk about what you're doing for milestones. Um so um each of you now has the opportunity to modify your character uh in line with those milestones. Uh, so, uh, if you've given it some thought, we can talk about what you'd like to do. If you have not given it some thought, uh, happy to, we can talk about that now. Yeah, I have given it some thought cause I had a, a, a kind of a stunt partially written out before that I was considering using that first session. Um, I, and I like work cause it is more social, but I'm not, um, I'm not sure for what, um, kind of action I, I think is more appropriate. So basically All right. it's, All right. uh, it's what I'd written out was um, uh, somebody else that kind of helped me work on it. I kind of called it silver tongue poison words that allow me to substitute deceit for rapport, either in an overcome or created advantage. I don't know what would be more appropriate when I'm faking kind feelings and using lying flattery, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's a, that sounds That's fun. perfect. That what, sounds is, perfect you think, what, do you think that kind of thing would come up more, would be more appropriate for overcome or create an advantage? Uh, well, the thing is, is what you're doing right there is you're actually saying that I can use a different skill to achieve a certain effect. So you can actually just make, the, in this instance, in my opinion, you can make the stunt, use deceive for rapport uh, to create a connection with someone. Okay. So, like, you can... You can do that. I think that that is, that is perfectly fine. That's kind of like okay. a stunt that says you can attack with stealth. Um so, okay. yeah, now connection. Mm. Honestly, I'm going to leave it loose like that, um, just so that it's more broadly applicable since we don't have many sessions. Like, that's that's one of the things with stunts is that you want to make sure that you scope them appropriately for mm. the game that you're playing. And some of that, it, and I mean, it's, it's absolutely an art. Um, so, like, for instance, saying that you can use deceive instead of rapport to create a connection with someone is fairly broad. And if we were playing a campaign, um, I would scope it down even further um, to one of the actions. But for today's game, I'm going to say that that sounds perfectly fine. Um, lie your ass off. <laughs> um, uh, so go ahead and add that stunt to your character sheet. You will have to toggle advanced mode to be able to add a third stunt. Okay. Um, and then you can enter that in. All right. So um, I have kind of a thought for uh, for my for uh, CJ. So yeah. I'm sort of like I'm kind of uh, there's kind of so for the extra aspect. That's another thing that we can talk about probably later. But like, yeah, part of my class fantasy, if you will, for playing this character. Um, is for him at some point to be giving a sermon on a street corner. That <laughs> seems very apropos of the time period, but also yeah. it feels like an essential element of his 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 role in the story. So I'm I'm thinking I want to have some kind of stunt that gives him like just like a standard plus two bonus to provoke if he's like preaching. And I don't know how we need to define preaching. Well, so but... so what are you hoping that he's going to provoke people to do? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> like, okay. That's the thing is so, that it would probably uh, depend a lot on the situation. Do donate to him for his church. But like, no, though, that's is not, it, that's not really what know. he would need. It'd is be it, more like we need to, you guys need to get your act together and like repent of, I don't know. Well, that's what he's looking for. Wrong. To provoke I mean, a crowd into action. Like, you know, are you trying yeah, to I'm, like. I don't want it to be like Gaston angry mob provoking, <laughs> but like, well. but uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't really know what it's going to look like, but that seems like a thing that he would do. 
I, I mean, I think. Oh, good. Uh, oh, I was gonna say, like, I mean, I don't know if that would come up during this, but it would be useful to be able to provoke a crowd into doing what you wanted to do, yeah, and you could sure. change what you wanted them to do depending on what the situation was. But yeah, I don't know if that would come up. Uh, okay. Um, or if it would be too powerful. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, so I don't want to play, I, like, my plan isn't to play Pikmin. I don't want to be, like, playing an RTS all of a sudden. But, <laughs> that would like, be, yeah. But, here's, like, uh, yeah. Here's my thought. Why not make it, like, you know, get plus two to provoke a crowd to violent action with the word of God? Um, <laughs> ah, that's, like, really, I don't know if I like that, though. I don't want, uh, like, pitchforks and torches. Okay, or or not, that's not my brand. Okay, plus two, <laughs> plus two to provoke uh, a crowd to action with the word of God. So not why violent, don't we, but why don't we? Why don't we just specify nonviolent action? Nonviolent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Like yeah, I don't know, I, like pro like protesting a business, so then like it blocks the people in there from coming to get us or something, like something. Yeah, like or just like a ma I think like <laughs> a, just for one thing, amassing a large crowd of people can be really yeah. useful. But also, I'm thinking like uh, just okay. like a problem that has to be addressed, or like we need to go fix. I mean. I imagine that community oh, service probably won't be a large facet of this session, just given we're just, our track we're just record. start a community organizing group in this town. Yeah, like, <laughs> I just want to let you know, I listen, street. listen, I listen to what you ask for by what you ca add onto your character cool. sheet. Yeah. Mm. So like, you know, I, see. I, I try to like, I try to provide. Yeah, so that's that's kind of where I'm at. That sounds, that sounds like a lot of fun to me. That sounds good. I like it. Go ahead and add it. All right, Dylan, Amelia, how are we doing for milestones? Uh, milestones, I still don't really know what I want. Let me consider. Okay. How about so you, I have, uh, I have an idea, um, and I'm thinking the one aspect that I'm looking at, the free aspect, which is the marks practically con themselves, that's kind of a little nonspecific and okay. Um, I'm thinking of changing that to represent, you know, maybe I know somebody, um, but I also am not sure of the NPCs we're going to be interacting with in this session. So um, do we want to just kind of like rework that when that NPC comes into the picture or what is I'm just wondering? Well, you, it could be specific NPC like, and, and we can create that now and I can add it to the game. Um, my, my prep is not rigid, uh, but one of the things that we could also do is make it, um, I mean, honestly, the free aspect could be uh, friendly and familiar, um, which is part of how you are able to like create great rapport with people and con people, you know, because you are, you know, like friendly. Uh, and so that's something that can help the like the con artist part. Um, but if you're leaning towards like a particular person, um, we can absolutely kind of flesh that out um, as well. Hmm. I, I guess it would also depend on how frequent we would be communicating with this NPC, because if it's just going to be someone who shows up for a scene, you know, um, it would probably be too narrow of a scope so i mean I'm thinking really, that familiar part is, is really adaptable because then you can just say like you're really kind of it implies you're very good at creating that false sense of familiarity um with people yeah and and it's good because i've got like a whole list of aliases that he's gone under so that'll be fun all right yeah. okay are you happy with it'll be fun when we call you by the wrong name at the wrong time <laughs> Yeah, I think that's I think that's good um, because I, I'm otherwise pretty satisfied with um, my character stunts and aspects because um, part of it is also that it he's kind of tailor made more for this session than um, the previous one. So yeah, I uh, I added my recap aspect. Uh, it's the one I put in Discord Discord, uh, and I. Uh, swapped uh contacts and shoot that is what i did for my uh 
All right, your context is now thing. a two, and your shoot is a one. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, should we be adding our recap aspect now too? Then. Well, I was I was gonna do recap aspects after okay. milestone. So yeah, now's cool. absolutely okay. a good time to it. Amelia, can you talk about um, what you intend by? I've got a bad feeling about this. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Let me rewind just a little bit. I want to talk about what uh, recap aspects are because they're not in any fate book. Um, <laughs> Ooh. Uh, basically what I've done here, um, for this session is, uh, because we started in the first session with just three aspects, um, which is, which we did that so that we didn't have to create the full five cause we were short on time. And I want to start having your character since this is the second session, like grow a little bit, uh, and have a fourth one. Uh, I asked all of the players here to create an aspect based on what they've learned about their character from the last session. So um, uh, colloquially, I just refer to them as just like recap aspects, um, but they don't actually have to tie into like last session explicitly. Um, it's another aspect to better define a person's character. Um, and so um, so that's what that's what that was about. And I accidentally kicked my poor cat. Oh no! It, not very hard. He's still laying down right no. there. So now I'm petting him. I mean, him he's a cat. Foot. He probably deserved it for something. No, but they do well, get in the way, though. They get right in front of you, and you're doing oh. stuff. I've got a. No, cat we have a story. new kitten as of a oh. week ago. Oh. So yeah. Oh, oh. oh nice. Is it a tuxedo kitten? No, it's solid black. Okay. Oh, tuxedo yes. kittens are crazy. I've got a tuxedo cat, and it's it's crazy. Orange I'm cats gonna... as well. They're him. They're yes. himbos. Yes. <laughs> I had a 30 pound orange cat uh, back oh. in the day. He was lovely. Um, yes. I've got a quick cat story that everyone will probably enjoy because it's the yes. internet. Uh, so, <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, so uh, we have three cats and one of the cats, Maisie, um, is, uh, you know, kind of like a turquoise cat who is incredibly smart. And she and I have this like antagonistic relationship. Like we love each other and all of that, but like it's antagonistic. Like I'll egg okay. her on and she'll egg me on. Um, and the other morning I decided I was egging her on like I do. <laughs> and then. Uh, at one point, my wife and I were playing Wingspan and we kind of like look over to the cat litter box and the this this cat, Maisie, had knocked my favorite jacket off the hook above the litter box. Oh, um, no. And so our litter box has a cover. It's one of those like hidden ones, knocked it off onto the floor and then dragged it into the litter box. So, yeah, so that was the revenge that she got on me. So, oh geez. Yeah. So I'm working on my revenge on her. So <laughs> uh, I'm petty. So, all right. Um, <laughs> so that was the cat story, but back to recap aspects. Um, Amelia, if you can tell us about, I've got a bad feeling about this. Right. So um, let me get back to our discord. So unfortunately, because it doesn't have um, a description in fairy, that's yeah. uh, unfortunate. Um, uh, the description is like, she, she's a little bit of, I know there's like not a whole lot of supernatural stuff, but she's like a little bit of an empath and can read the vibe of a person or situation, kind of like a spidey sense. Like I, in my mind, she started realizing this last time during like when they would come up to a room and like, oh no, something, this is going to be your bad one. Um, <laughs> so an invoke would be like, she could pick up on somebody's tell or notice when they're not telling the truth or something, or like have that, like, Hmm, I think, I think something is off here. Like, I don't know if, yeah, it's it's kind of to do with like her um what's it called? Her notice, but it it, it would yeah. be like okay. You know, more of like a passive notice, but like a compel example would be um she can be convinced that what she's feeling is 100% the truth to the point of things being some sometimes like a self-fulfilling prophecy like this guy is going to fight us like he's out for us and then he overhears and is like, "Yeah, I'm mad at you now." <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, it could also be compelled that like there's genuinely something wrong in there and getting inside is a bad idea and you decide mm -hmm. to stay outside. So, yeah, yeah, I like it. Excellent stuff. Oh, thank you. Who would like to talk about their recap aspect next? Or need some okay. help coming up with? one? Yeah, I definitely need some help. So I, was, I listened back to the last session to kind of get just to refresh myself. And so yeah. I, and I'm there was a there was a moment when I was doing the, the draft, the mini carnivorous demonic drafts, whatever they were. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I got, you compelled me on that one to like, have it be uh, like, I have to find out oh, more yeah. about what happened to my parents kind oh, of yeah. thing. And that never really played out there. So I thought it'd be interesting to, to do that in some kind of aspect. 
but yeah. it's sort of it's still connected to my trouble ask it, it, that's still very connected to the trouble one so i was trying i to figure out a way to make that one both kind of invocable and compelable and be interesting i think that'd be cool Mm. Well, you know, what we could do here is we could um, kind of lean into like, so you desperately need to find out what happened to your parents um, and to make it different than mourning the mysterious death of my parents. It could be risky contacts. And mm. what that means is, is that you are getting in touch with like really seedy people to try and find out information because like all of the like not so seedy like sources of information aren't yielding anything. So you now are making like really like risky connections. Like you are talking to like maybe like demonologists and, you know, criminal, like the, the criminal underbelly of the West, I love that. you know, cool. um, things like that. And so what that, you know, an example of an invoke for that is to be able to find out information about something easier because you've you've got this situation and you've got a, a two rank in contacts. So like, you know, you could try and like solve some problems with these risky contacts you have. Um, but then it can also bite you because those risky contacts like, you know, certain debts might become due or like uh, it can create a, a problem for you. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. that. Or, or just like a, or you might look a little too deep when you're trying to get some of this information and find yourself in a situation all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Cool. Good. Um, that, that actually kind of ties in well with my, uh, recap aspect. If you sure. can talk about that. Absolutely. So, uh, the Reverend CJ Haggard has, has kind of like seen the front lines all of a sudden. Um, mm -hmm. he has matched his own will against a demon and come out alive. Um, and he's like, you know, all of a sudden realize that he's kind of attached to these people. And uh, also he's realized how serious this danger is. And that has brought with it an awareness that he's responsible for the well-being of especially the people in this group, but more generally of the people he has the opportunity to influence. So I, I would imagine that like he, CJ probably doesn't think that the people, like the rest of the party is as concerned about like the demonic threat as they should be. Um, he Definitely probably, not, yeah, like he's like, I don't, in the back of his head, he's thinking like, they don't get how serious this is. Um, but also in general, he's feeling, I guess you could say a calling start to descend from on high where yeah. he's becoming aware that I might be responsible for more than much just myself. And an example of like an invoke for this would be recognizing that a person like an NPC they just met has the potential to be more than they are and uh, using like provoke or rapport to try to like encourage them to change and to rise up and to be someone different. Um, and I think a compel would certainly be a situation where uh, maybe I don't trust the judgment of someone in the party as much as would be like tactically sound um, okay. or even maybe uh, I feel a little too responsible for someone when it's probably not wise for me to take responsibility. All right. I like that. Sounds good. All right. Um, Dylan. So I've had kind of a few different thoughts coalescing. Um, the first one being, um, I think a big part of John's character that impacted him in the the last session was that train car full of all of the all of the memories of the kind of reminders of the things that he's done in terms of like who he swindled so i was thinking of like having something related to like he kind of must now understand that i cannot keep you know going in this direction anymore i cannot keep, i've got to i can't keep running away from these consequences because they will find me um I have wanted to tie this into a character concept that I didn't introduce in the last session, but I've had it in the back of my mind since the beginning. You know the old saying, it's like, I want to be able to look at myself in the mirror? Well, John actually can't because the the person he got the mask from, who I haven't completely fleshed out, Ooh. actually is the the who looks back at him in the mirror and taunts him. So oh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Interesting. That's really cool. So I was thinking maybe have um, maybe like the devil in the mirror or something like that. Yeah. Representing, 
yeah that kind of character oh yes or something to do with silver because at that time pretty much all mirrors were oh. were silvered and then glass over top so maybe in all silvered surfaces you see the devil yes yes <laughs> that's, oh that's so good i love that it's like yeah. you're looking at a spoon and you're like huh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the of all the no, way I don't, I don't, I don't do light. soup. Yeah, that that actually sounds yeah a lot like a lot of fun. That would be a oh, fun. Oh gosh, um, I I like that. Yeah, cool. Well, go ahead and add that. That sounds like it's it's very it's Stephen good. King's it. I really like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Josh, I don't know. I mean, and I, I was thinking like I know that I want to step on uh, Randy's um uh, prep here, so I don't know. But I also connected to what you're talking about your your recap. I, when I was listening to it, I, I uh, remembered something that I had forgotten about where you had left your blood for a demon when your ear was Oh, blood. yes. And you left behind yes, it as yes, a yes, So yes, some yes. demon out there has your blood. Oh, crap. I, I'm also yeah. seeking out shady people. So maybe that could like somehow connect, you know. I forget uh, that's a really who has good point. Oh, crap. Who's cool. blood? Because I haven't rewatched the first It was the Reverend. In a while. Josh, yeah, the yeah. Rev's blood. He When when his ears bled, when the demon spoke, mm -hmm. he you can I like him left, left my blood. Him. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's cool. God. <laughs> if I had if I had another aspect slot, it would be like it would just be like the devil has my number or something. Yeah. Oh, you guys are so dead. Oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, All right. My, well, if hey, I had in accepted world, the compel, probably just re-roll as a ghost. I know. If I had accepted the compel to fall into hell, Moira wouldn't have made it to such a <laughs> So there is that. <laughs> I I think it's fair to say that none of our life paths end in no. dying of old age. <laughs> like, no. no, absolutely no. not. This Hopefully isn't not. a career that you get to retire from. <laughs> oh, awesome. All right. So before we start, we've got one more thing that I want to go over, which is a new rule that I'm introducing for today's session. Um, uh, if you've uh, looked at Notion, you've already seen that I've added it. I added it late today. Um, it's, uh, it's a rule that I've adapted from the, uh, world of adventure called, uh, called romance in the air. Uh, and what it is, is in romance in the air, everything is around like diplomacy and talking and they're like, the idea is that you're not going to solve things with fisticuffs or like being shot, but you still want those as options on the table for ways to like resolve things because, you know, I, I mean, you can challenge someone to a duel in romance in the air, um, yeah. but you don't want to have everything kind of turn into violent conflicts. Um, you still want conflicts, but you don't want violent ones. And one of the things that you've all said for today's session is that you want to focus on the social and role-playing aspect of the game. Um, to help achieve this, uh, I'm introducing a new rule for today's session, um, which uh, I've uh, called Quick Conflicts, okay? Um, what it is is, um, you know, sometimes there are, uh, like, there are, con there are conflicts that uh, don't warrant the... Oh, I'm sorry. This was written for my... Um, for another campaign that I did. But basically yeah, yeah. what it is is if you decide that you're going... Or someone's going someone decides that they're going to shoot you. We don't immediately move into a conflict and do initiative and all of that. What we're doing is we're going to do an overcome roll. Okay. So the attacker is going to roll their shoot skill or whatever their appropriate attack skill is. Um, uh, and then what that does is that sets the difficulty for the defender who is making an overcome roll to, to not get taken out by whatever that particular like That's super cool. violence was. So like for instance, let's say Dude. that, you know, CJ is going to get shot and, you know, um, the, the opponent who shoots gets a four. That means that CJ has to defend with a four, like roll in athletics mm. or something like that. Now it is an overcome roll, which means that you can choose to overcome at a cost. So you can spend fate points to make it a success. And you know, the conflict is like that is resolved super fast. Like he doesn't get shot and manages to get away. Yeah. Um, okay. So that we can have those moments still happen in the narrative, but we speed it up a little bit. Um, and, uh, yes, I did mention that you can succeed at a cost because it isn't overcome. And so what that means is that, um, CJ, if you didn't 
spend enough to overcome that defend, but yet um, you wanted to succeed, you could succeed at a cost, which then I would say like, okay, well you rolled, got a two result and the difficulty was four, you're gonna take two points of stress on your consequences. Um, in which case you would take a mild consequence of like grazed arm or shot in the arm and, but you managed to get away. So, um, so yeah, so that is what we're going to do to try and keep the focus where we want it to be today. Um, while, while me not saying like, Hey, just don't do violent things, um, because you're players. Um, so (laughs) (laughs) you're going to want to punch and shoot stuff. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you're gonna I mean, want to like, do chaotic shit <laughs> my guns are itching <laughs> well i mean you guys keep talking about all of my prep and i'm just like <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no no you've been a gm for long enough you know you're like you, you just yeah. have these oh, things yeah. in your pocket yeah mm-hmm. you know you just have to yeah. like, open know. the snare a little bit and wait for someone to just like put both their feet inside <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i did i did a bunch of prep about like you know uh fronts which is a thing that I've stolen from Dungeon World, which is basically like what groups are trying to do things and what they're trying to do. I prepped some NPCs that are doing some shit. Uh, mm-hmm. And I wrote down some scenes that I want to make sure happen. And I don't have an ending because that's on you. So, um, okay. yes. So, yes. So, um, so yeah. Uh, that's why, like, all of the great ideas that you gave me were wonderful and you're going to die. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry, no. my mic was still on, wasn't it? <laughs> all right. So uh, we got other learn to pay. We got other learn to play fake groups to get to. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> cycle through quick. <laughs> gotta do. Gotta gotta get it. Gotta do it. All right. So let's start. Um, yes. Or well, first of all, is everyone ready to start? Yes. Everybody yeah. good? Okay. Yeah. Uh, just checking to see if anybody needed like a couple of minutes before we started. So, um, bio breaks are needed. I know. All right. So let's begin. Uh, what is my notes? All right. Uh, so we are going to open on this Wild West town. And one of the things that I don't have for this Wild West town is a name for the Wild West town. Um, so if someone has a good name for this town, uh, we could sure use one. Uh, that includes the chat too. If anybody's in the chat and wants to provide a a name for the town. That would be... Excellent. If anyone in chat has a name. Mm-hmm. My daughter's busy or I'm sure she would have posted by now. Your, your daughter has the <laughs> best names for things. I was like, yes, <laughs> man. If I still um, did, I, uh, I used to teach uh, pre-kindergarten art after school, like art and man, the creativity. Amazing. I loved yeah. it. <laughs> she is, she is something things. else. Uh, well, I tell you what, then let's go to, um, do any of Random you have a name generator. or should I go to fantasy name generators? You know, I was oh, looking at fantasy name generators now, yeah. too. I know. Okay. Uh, I like ho- so hollow like, being in there somewhere. Like yeah. something's hollow. The, uh, the, yeah. the kind of like stereotypical, like old West name that pops into my head is like last chance somehow, some kind of last chance situation. Oh, <laughs> last the, chance the t- hollow. The town- the, t- the town that bad. I love is um, there's a town in Texas called Truth or Consequences. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, and I love that name so much. Last is... Chance Truth or Consequences Hollow. <laughs> How about just Last Chance Hollow? That's a long last time. Chance that Hollow sounds, is pretty good. Chance, yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, Although, good. like, Truth and Consequences is pretty good. It's way better than so and any names we've got for cities in Pennsylvania. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Pennsylvania city names are horny. Like, um, goodness. Intercourse, think, intercourse famously. PA, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I'm I'm skipping on all the other ones, but if I look them up, there's a bunch of them. And I yeah. know that within like I think a three or four hour drive from where I live, there is a gay West Virginia. Yes. And, um so here here in regular Virginia, we just have a lot of uh, uh towns named for other places that are just like why like Syria, Lebanon. Oh, and, like, oh yeah. Okay. We have, we have, oh, that uh, reminds right? me of uh, I used to live in Idaho and there's like Moscow, Idaho. Oh yeah. That's like there's like it's like twenty five okay. people. It's Paris, Paris Texas. Texas. You do you. Yeah, Paris, Texas. Hey. That's uh, uh, Oh, go ahead. Oh yeah, that's uh, like I love that I, I'm just like I don't know if people from there moved there and they were just like, That's where I'm from, so this is where this is going to be. I don't <laughs> know. I think we got in New York and West Virginia. Okay. Yeah, we just, 
So uh, Craig in the chat said there's a town in the UK called Pity Me. Oh God! So ooh. that's so funny. Yeah, that yeah. UK place. Oh, I kind of, so I kind of like Pity Hollow. That's like actually pretty good. <laughs> so, uh, so Last Chance Hollow or Pity Hollow? I kind of like Last Chance because that has like an ominous feel to yes. it. Yeah, you want happy ominous. Yeah. But... I do All like right. Pity Hollow though. Confetti. So we've got a town name. Yay, all right. Confetti. There's the there's the fiery confetti. Um, all right. So last chance hollow. Um, we are in last chance hollow. Last chance hollow. Um, just to give you a good sense, um, it is definitely uh, a fresh town. The town itself is maybe two years old. Um, it is constantly changing and growing, um, you know, uh, and doing so in crazy ways. Every time you leave to go and do things and come back, uh, the town itself is changing and morphing um, as different like buildings get propped up, buildings that already exist get reinforced, um, all sorts of new people kind of coming through. Uh, last chance hollow as you're on kind of the edge of the west um, and and making your way towards the golden coast um, there are some locations um, I'm just going to give you a sense of the place so there is um, there is the the church uh, in town um, which is just called church um, and it has the the um, Basically, it's kind of a, a church that's used by various uh, ministers and preachers who come through. Um, it's just a collection of pews, collection plates, um, and uh, a giant kind of like simple cross uh, behind the altar. Uh, there is outside of town, um, basically out to the west of town, there's Hell's Gate. Um, it oh, yeah. is, uh, kind of considered to be a passage out West, um, you know, kind of like a, uh, a devilish version of the arch in St. Louis. Um, it is a natural stone archway that kind of stretches across the walls of uh, a tall, thin Canyon. Um, you know, uh, legends say that you can see the devil sitting on that arch when the moon is full, but those are of course just tall tales. Uh, there is the Shimmering Pint Saloon. Um, so in the middle of this town, kind of like as an anchor point, is the Shimmering Pint Saloon. It is the the first saloon that was um, that was here in Last Chance Hollow, um, and it is named after its signature drink. Um, uh, basically, uh, Martha Thompson, who um, uh, runs the Shimmering Pint Saloon, um, has like fancy frou-frou drinks, which are weirdly popular in this Wild West town, uh, but they are enjoyed. Also has beers and ales and liquors and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, the town hosts a local barber surgeon, uh, if you can find them, um, basically uh, doing what a barber surgeon does. He comes and goes as he will. Um, and one of the, the other points of interest is that there is a, a general store in town. Um, it's referred to as the Giant Cactus General Store because there are <laughs> there is a kind of like a uh, 10, 11 foot tall cactus that the general store kind of has in like behind their lot. Lot. Um, and in fact, they've got like, a, they've, um, when they built the cac or built the general store, they specifically kind of like fenced in around a patch of like cactuses and wildlife, um, almost like a little park of sorts, um, that you can kind of go through the general store and then go out to the, to the, like the park portion of it. Um, the worst playground in the West. <laughs> um, well, I mean, considering the fact that that Juniper, the the person who runs it, has like three children, uh, constantly playing out there, yes, it is the worst park ever. <laughs> uh, but they they enjoy it. Uh, they enjoy it a lot. So those are some locations around town. Uh, we're going to open our session on church. Um, so so uh, church is currently in session. There's about like. I don't know, a uh, dozen and a half people in attendance. Everybody's kind of dirty and grimy. Um, it is uh, the middle of the afternoon. So it's mostly uh, uh, older men and women that are sitting in the pews um, praying. And of course, our, our very own Reverend CJ uh, is leading them in prayer. Um, so CJ, uh, set the stage with some of your sermonizing for these people. Ooh. Um, well, I'm at my favorite church and I can't wait to give a sermon on religion. 
Um, Let's that's go. A joke. I'm not actually going to do that. Uh, this is funny. Yeah. Like it's like non, so, so non-denominational that it loses any kind of. Uh, so yeah, I I'm leading the people in prayer. Um, it's just kind of your standard revivalist fair. Like it's, I would say that this church is fairly interactive. Um, it is not so interactive that it becomes like a raucous thing. But it's not uncommon for me or another itinerant preacher. It's it's pretty standard to like have preachers come through town and kind of do a little guest bit. Okay. And, you know, they'll collect, they'll take a cut, they'll move on. And obviously I'm coming through. So it's, you know, I, I, I'm probably familiar with the clergy mm -hmm. um, and, and it's my turn. So I'm um, leaving, leading everyone in prayer. It's pretty interactive. You'll occasionally hear like an amen shouted from the back or someone like, you know, just like preach from the front. Um, and I am bringing, I'm bringing this crowd up a little bit. I'm getting them deeper and deeper into the spirit. And what I wish to impress upon them is the fact that God is watching and the fact that all of us will one day be held to account. I want them to know that they're responsible. Dang it. That just because no one's looking out here in the West doesn't mean God ain't. All right. So, Reverend, what I would like to do uh, is ask you to um, to actually make a role for that. Um, mm -hmm. You are trying to um, inspire everyone to understand that God is watching them. Um, Not and, in a creepy way, but just like, hey, you know, you, it, well, there's no I free mean, passes in the West. I mean, exactly. Like, keep working. God is watching you. Yeah. Um, so that sounds like a provoke uh, because you're trying to make sure that they understand that God is watching you. Uh, so I will set the difficulty for this at a two. This is going to be a create advantage, um, to create this aspect. So go ahead and, uh, roll your provoke and it's spinning. You've got a three result. Great. That is uh, create advantage. And that is a tie on that. So now I have to, pardon me, I'm going to go. Look, because I always forget what a tie is on Create Advantage. Wait, was it was it difficulty two, you said, or three? Difficulty two, which means I don't need to look up squat. <laughs> All right, yeah. so, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to add an aspect. Um, let's see. Uh, God is watching you. Um, let's see. So <laughs> you brought God into the room, yeah. literally. Yes. Um, and I'm going to actually add a free invoke track. Okay. So you get one free oh invoke on that. Um, so you can all see that in Fari, right? Yep. Okay, great. Uh, just checking because, you know, got to try show? that out. Oh, okay. I see it now. Uh, towards okay. the bottom. Yeah. Um, I as GM have a public and private list. Uh, mm -hmm. of things, which yeah. is really interesting. So we'll see um, see how that works out. But uh, God is watching you. Um, let's see. I can add all sorts of crazy stuff to this. Um, ooh, I can actually hide it. Boom. It's hidden. <laughs> and, and now it's back. Okay. That moves it between the public interesting. and private. All right. And I can even change it. Be change the color. I will make it. I made it white, but I'm in dark mode. That doesn't work. Mm hmm. I'll make it blue. Oh, that's a weird blue. All right. Well, anyway, I'm it's like a teal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's make it white again or white. All right. So God is watching you with a free invoke CJ. Um, you have inspired the individuals here. Um, they kind of like, uh, they make their way out um, at the end. Um, everyone is making their contributions into the uh, collection plate that you're holding at the back of the church as everyone's funneling out um, because this is, you know, this is how the church raises money. Um, everybody's making their tithes. Um, and a little old lady uh, actually kind of comes shoveling or shuffling up to you. Um, and uh, her name, no one remembers her name because everyone just calls her the hugger. Uh, and this <laughs> little old lady just kind of like comes up uh, and she she puts her tithe, like a couple of pennies into the uh, into the contribution plate. And then she oh, gives I mean, you like, like, I like make very clear like prayer hands indication to her that I like receive and value her tithe. <laughs> Uh, she is, she is going to, to say, Oh, thank you. Uh, and she, she gets close and she gives you a big hug. Oh, um, yeah. uh, you know, the, the hug may be unwelcome, but she's really good at giving them. Uh, and, <laughs> and, Bless. and she says, she says, I, I would like you to know, um, Reverend Haggard that today's 
today's uh, sermon was especially motivating. I, I feel like I should get home and bake right away. But I, I must say, Reverend Haggard, that, um, that I have some concerns about things that are going on within the town. Uh, you see, I'm, I'm concerned about all the orphans in town. Um, I know there's only about a dozen of them as the town isn't very big, but I, I have concerns that they, they, they aren't being supported the way that they should. And I feel guilty that I should, should do something about that. And I feel that Reverend, as, as being a man of God, perhaps... Perhaps, and she looks down at the collections plate and then back up at you, perhaps you could do something for them. My eyes narrow and I say, not on my watch. And I take the collection plate and I walk away to go find the orphans. Oh! Uh, she's kind of like, she's shuffling behind you going, uh, Reverend Haggard, please. I, uh, I was just asking if, the, if they could have some support. You don't need to run off with your own money so fast. <laughs> Where I'm, I'm furious. I, I, when I left, for the record, when I left those this place, those orphans were okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry for making you angry. You can keep all of the money for the church if you want. Um, I'm so confused. Um, uh, <laughs> because you got angry and left immediately. Yes, I, I, I stormed um, out of the church yes. with a collection plate. I'm like right. carrying this collection plate in town. Uh, yes. Um, so, so as you are doing this, um, uh, John, uh, wait a minute. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It is, uh, Peacock. So Herbert, uh, Peacock, just refreshing names. Hessen wing. That's why that one won't stick. Yeah, um, stick Peacock is fine. I don't even know right. why I came up with the name. Uh, yes. So, um, so Peacock, you, um, Madam Charlotte uh, has sent you to go and gather the Reverend and uh, Mr. Harrington and uh, Ms. Haskell uh, so that they can uh, you they uh, Madam Charlotte uh, has some some work that needs to be done. And based on the uh, the train heist that you did um, would like you know, the four of you to kind of handle a thing um, and has sent you uh, Peacock to go and, and get all of these people. Uh, so Peacock, you have, you are kind of in the middle of the street. You see the Reverend, um, you know, holding a collection plate and storming through the center of town um, about 20 or 30 feet behind him is a little old lady saying, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to upset you. Please forgive me. Um, uh, and so this is, this is the situation that you find yourself in Peacock. Okay. So, uh, so I'm supposed to be gathering everybody. Okay. But so, uh, all right. Okay. Well, I just, I, uh, you know, intercept him, stop and stand in front of him, uh, you know, catch him. Cause I can see he's clearly kind of on, on a mission. Um, and, uh, I put my hand to his chest and, uh, I say, um, Look, I can see you're really riled up about something, but Madam Charlotte is a, is a has has a job for us, and uh, we don't want to leave her waiting. So we need to go we need to gather everybody up. I don't know. Uh, was was Moira in church this morning? Uh, talking uh, to me? Yes. Um, I tell her I saw her in the back. Uh, it seemed like she wasn't particularly attentive, but the Lord works in mysterious ways. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what ways it's he's going to work over. today. Let's go get her. I'm just glad that she found peace in my, in okay. my congregation. Oh, I'm so glad that you stopped. Oh, you walk so fast, Reverend Haggard. I'm so sorry for upsetting you. Please don't don't take it out on the orphans. Yeah, were you running from the city <laughs> lady? So, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go beat up some orphans. Uh, no, uh, so I, I I tell I tell Peacock, look, uh, I I know we have a job to do, but I have a job to do too. Um, I need to figure what, out, what exactly? I need to get to buy. So apparently um, since I left the collection fund that I set up for the orphans to provide for them in the itinerant couple of weeks has not been substantiated and I have to get to, bottom, to the bottom of this. Well, let's look here. Charlotte has her fingers in a lot of pots. So she might know something about that. She might be able to help. Uh, we should probably just head there now instead of you just hidden willy-nilly wherever on these streets. Let's go get some information. Let's go find out what we can do about that. For a moment, I kind of like white knuckle grip my collection plate. And then I just calm down, say, you're probably right. Let's go. So, uh, well, I guess we can head back to the church and grab Moira then. Uh, who, who's the other? 
Hold on, what's your what's your name, Dylan? John. John. Okay, hold on. John Harrington. So yeah, let's head back to the church and grab Moira. On your way back, um, she kind of stumbles up the path and is like, "Oh yeah, I was just coming to." Uh, it's good, sir. Yeah, a good sermon today. Great, good. Were you coming to? Were you coming to get me? Yes. Oh, okay. That's convenient. Great. <laughs> yes, we awesome. need to go see Charlotte now. Anybody okay. know where John is? Oh, I I don't know where anybody is at this hour. I don't even know where I am. I know well, it's in church. Well, I'm at I'm at uh um the Shimmering Pint or um. Sorry, I probably messed up the name. I'm at the saloon. No, that's right. Is that that's oh, right, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah. Shimmering Pine, right? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Shimmering Pine. So uh, I probably Moira would, would know. She'd be like, Oh yeah, he he and I were at the Shimmering Pine uh last night. He he's probably still there. He's probably still there uh at this point. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I oh actually just, for, just a little uh oh see here. Um what like how much time has passed here between you know the mm-hmm. this the, the train thing and now? That is a good that's question. A, that's a great question. I don't know, a couple of months? <laughs> I, don't know. I would have, oh, a couple of months? Oh, dang, okay. I mean, like, yeah. I, guys, no, I was what, thinking what, maybe what, like what overnight. I, I was thinking well, I was couple, say, like a like, week or two at least. Yeah, uh, it, a week. If That's fine too. It can sure. be a week or week. two. Sounds good. Just yeah. wanted to have a sense of time, yeah. yeah sure, yeah, yeah. sure, sure. All right, well, let's head over, to the, let's head over the, let's over the saloon then. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. And, uh, so what do we, uh, what do we see when we head in there? So you see me playing off against um, uh, against someone in poker, and it looks like we're kind of pr- pretty evenly matched. That's As we walk into the saloon, I just take the money from the collection plate and put it in like the deepest co- pocket of my coat. <laughs> just in case. I'm not going to just stand here with a big wad of money. <laughs> yeah, more recall, kind of observe this and be like, yeah, no, no, that's a, that's a good, that's a good call uh, with this crowd. Hey, John, you, uh, you, 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 you winning? You, you losing? What's, what's going Oh no, you, you look like you're about even there. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see How's here. Going? If I do this. And so basically like, I, I look over and the guy I'm playing looks really uh, against looks really shady. I think you got me beat on this hand, Jack. And I, and I fold. Sometimes you gotta know when to cut your losses. And after that, um, I pick up my chips and, um, and I hand over what what i've lost so um yeah but he's he's still playing and you know he sits down with some other folks you know and plays with them as well what i miss actually actually, whenever you kind of like decide that it's time for you to you know you guys are fairly even you decide that it's time to kind of like cash out um, yeah, he goes, no, no, I, I reckon I need a chance to earn my money back. And he, he kind of like pulls his pistol out, um, points it at you and says, you're getting back Ooh. down on this table and we're going to finish up some more games. I need to earn my money back. Um, and he is threatening you with his pistol. Oh, shit. Really quick. Did, did the hugger lady follow us into the bar? Uh, she did not. Okay. That's probably, yeah, that's probably for the and best. I- I have I have yeah. a thought. So with uh with the gear we we did last time, uh, mm-hmm. I have I have a stunt that allows me to kind of create an advantage with deceive when I'm calling attention to myself. Yeah. Um. So um, even though I have no intention of actually doing so, obviously because I have business to attend to, I had to kind of give this guy the impression that like, because you know, uh, so pick out somebody who's you know he's dressed nice. He looks like he's got a got a lot of money. So mm-hmm. I want to give this guy the impression that like you know, hey, settle down, and I'll, I'll kind of. I'll kind of buy in here uh, to, to um, you know, get, give him the sense that I'm going to, I'm going to jump in and, and play too. So he'll, maybe he's got the sense that he's got some more, you know, uh, money to take off of somebody. So he'll chill out. Okay. So you're actually going to play or you're just lying? No. So I, I, don't, I'm, I have no intention of playing because I want to get out of there, but I want to, I yeah. just want to kind of create an advantage in the situation of, of getting him to cool off, mm. you know, by, okay. by, by about this. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. Go ahead and uh, roll create advantage with the C. Oh, right. uh, I will set the difficulty Boy. for this at a three because the situation's pretty heavy. 
Okay. Um, and yep. I love the mental image and, of you seeing uh, this dude pull a gun and be like, I want in on this game. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, well, I, well, and the thing, yeah, I know. All right, so you got a three. The difficulty was a three. So that well, is have the, uh, I have with the, because of my uh, cane, I have that plus two to create an advantage with deceive. Oh, there you go. So that makes it a five, Dang. which is a success. Um, great. Uh, what advantage are you creating? What do you want that to be? Um, something about basically him like drawing down. Like I don't want, you know, I'm pointing the gun at us anymore. Like settling down and kind of coming back down to the table just to like, give us an opening at the very least that he's chill. And if we have to bail, you know, or whatever we're going to do next. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I've added an aspect settling down. So um, I'm, I'm actually going to jump in there and uh, just kind of come in and put my hand very paternally on this man's shoulder and oh, say, no. now, now there's no need to get excited. Common law in these parts allows for gambling, but it's important that we all play by the rules. There all right. Go. So, um, nice. All right, so, so you are trying to basically like get him to to stop doing what he's doing now. Uh, yeah, it sounds like sounds like what you're doing there, Reverend. So Reverend, go ahead. Um, that is, hmm, it sounds like an empathy because you're trying to kind of just empathize yes. that like yeah we're playing but no we're not doing it this way. Um, this is an overcome role. I'm going to set the difficulty for this uh, at a three. Because uh, yeah, you're well, trying to empathy here. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say you can roll empathy. Yeah. You're kind of yeah. trying to calm him down. Uh, and this is an overcome. Mm -hmm. um, and so it looks like I tied here because I have a plus three. Uh, yes. So you can so... choose to succeed at a minor cost, spend a, a fate point, or spend a free invoke um, from the aspect settling down. Um, I think I want to spend use... that. I I I I think I want to. I think I, wanna, um, I, think I want to invoke that aspect, the free aspect. Just like wanna... kind of pacify everything okay. a little bit. All right. Uh, I've checked off the free invoke on settling down, and that is a success. Um, he puts his firearm away, and he says, "Well, I I, I reckon I do uh, want to pass on going to jail today." Um, and he starts collecting up his money and, and cards uh, and moves on to another game. So he does not shoot John Harrington. Nice. So, so mm -hmm. you have all calmed that situation down. Confetti! Yay, confetti! Yay. <laughs> all right. Cool. All right. Uh, where are you guys off to now? Well, I guess we'd, we'd head off to, to Charlotte, I suppose. That's where we're all here, right? Yeah. All right. Okay, great. Uh, you head off to Madam Charlotte's. Uh, Madam Charlotte's is... Um, oh, hold on. Uh, oh. Can I have... I, I, I thought, this, I know, for this loon, I, I, I just had this thought of, um, could I get some whatever Charlotte's favorite frou-frou drink is from the bar to take to her? Oh. It should be something oh. who, like is known amongst these go. people. They're all business managers. So yeah, I, uh, what kind of what kind of frou-frou drinks we got going on here? All right, they they will um they will give you a a pink sparkly grapefruit uh alcoholic right. beverage. Wow, grapefruit. So, That's hard to come by in these parts. Yes. I know. Yes. So um so yeah, and you you take a take that with you to go to Madam Charlotte's. So um Madam Charlotte's um is under construction. Um the um it used to be a well you remember it being a two-story building um, with a top floor with a bunch of um, kind of like uh, small rooms that people could rent by the hour of the day uh, and the uh, large parlor kind of in the first floor. Um, the uh, Madam Charlotte has begun construction to expand um, and is looking to basically add like another half story at the top. Um, so kind of like a little party area on the top, uh, but also adding, um, width to it as well to expand the parlor to have, um, well, honestly, you're not sure what she's going to do with the extra space that she's making on the second floor, uh, and the first floor as it is expanding wide, as well as having a, a half floor at the top. Um, so whenever you enter, there's all sorts of, uh, men and women doing construction work. Uh, you know, dragging boards. There are uh, some folks, 
they don't really have blueprints, but there are some some drawings on paper. Um, Madame Charlotte is um, uh, is talking to a couple of the construction workers. She kind of puts her finger up uh, to indicate for you to hold on a second. Um, and after she's, she's done, uh, she kind of approaches the three of you. She's like, I'm so sorry that there's so much dust in the air and that everything is just a giant chaotic mess, but, um, you know, fortune is good and, uh, I'm investing more, um, you know, here in this place. Um, so, uh, if you don't mind, we can all, uh, have a drink, uh, have some coffee, um, in my office. Does that sound good? Yeah, absolutely. I brought your, I brought your favorite from across the street. Oh, Peacock, you are a deer. And she just kind of like, like, uh, kind of gives you a little, like little pat punch on the cheek, uh, affectionately. She's like, you're a favorite of mine. Um, all right. So let's, uh, let's go in. Uh, you go into her office. Her office is, um, basically the size of a, a, it's kind of a small room. Uh, there is is not enough furniture for everyone to sit. Um, she kind of sits in a rather basic looking chair. There is, or yeah, a basic looking chair. This office is not for like, it's for her. It's not for company. Like the rest of the place is of course, kind of like overwrought, uh, to be comfortable for people. This place is like where her and, you know, uh, where she does her managerial kind of stuff. Um, if you've ever seen the back office at like a Burger King, um, <laughs> it's, it's basically like theirs is a closet. Hers is like a walk-in closet. Um, uh, you see that she does have, um, various like snippets of newspaper of things that like, uh, a series of events that like, you're not sure what connection they have to her, uh, framed on the wall. Um, she does have a couple of different dresses hanging up on the back of the door. Um, she has a, a small love seat in there. Um, it looks like she may use that for cat naps. So a couple of you can sit down on that. Um, uh, uh, Peacock, I imagine you're comfortable enough with her that you kind of sit on the edge of her desk. Um, excuse me. And Madam Charlotte is... She's like, thank you all for coming. I really, I really appreciate it. Um, that was r- remarkably quick, Peacock. I really kind of expected you to gather everyone by this afternoon. Um, so excellent work. Uh, so uh, the reason that I, I've gathered you here is that I have um, later today a meeting with someone who wants uh, a particular job done. Um, and I know that the, the lot of you are good at doing odd jobs. I think that's a nice way to polite way to say it. Um, and I think we all know what we mean. Um, with the, the, uh, break in on the train that you did, the heist, um, was particularly good. And I've talked you up a little bit to one of my clients. Uh, her name is Elizabeth Harrington. Um, I don't believe that she's any relation to you, John. Um, Mm. uh, and she is, um, she's new to town. Um, she is the vice president of the bank, um, which I have a bank name written down. Uh, she is the vice president of the Grand Fortune Bank Corporation, um, which is building the very first bank here in uh, Last Chance Hollow. I mean, yes, technically we've had banking, but mostly that's just been, you know, like uh, that's mostly been Jack who uh, spends some of the interest that he makes uh, on on things. Um, so this Grand Fortune Bank Corporation, uh, wants to make sure that the local, uh, that the local coach line, the local stagecoach, um, is secure enough that, um, if they were to, um, transport money that they would be able to, uh, do so safely. Um, that's one of their concerns. They don't have, uh, hired hands out here. It's going to take them probably, uh, probably until the fall to get the right people out here. And they want to make sure that they can start early um, before they send their people out here to guard some of their, their, uh, their money, the money that's the beginning of Western union. Uh, Essentially. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So basically what, um, uh, well, uh, Miss Hartgraves uh, is going to tell you more of the details of what's going on. But as far as I know, she just wants to make sure that the stagecoach line um, can handle uh, basically <laughs> bandits. So uh, so I figured that, that your group would be good for that. Now, I was uh, 
curious about the newspaper things there. It's just out of character here. So I was wondering if yeah. is would I either know about um that was what that was or could I kind of see if I could subtly glance at what all the stories she's trying to always get. Yeah, this, this is your first time she's got going on. Yeah, this is your first time in her office. She generally doesn't have people in her office. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Madam Charlotte is a private person. Oh, someone dropped out of Fari. No. So. It, oh, hold on. Okay. okay. I think that was me by accident. Hold on. Okay. All right. Just go ahead and rejoin. You'll have to make. Oh, wait a minute. No, it will. Fari will have saved your character sheet. Oh, cool. Um, well, with cool. The yeah, I'm good. I'm good. All right. All right. Great. Yeah. Um, thank you. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, uh, so actually, while I'm looking at Fari, I'm going to remove the settling down aspect because that situation is over, but God is still watching you. Uh, <laughs> all right. So so, uh, so um, I, I've been remaining standing this whole time and I'm like, you know, politely holding my hat in front of my chest. So just like out of character real quick, if I'm understanding correctly, she needs us to take care of some bandits. Uh, she needs us to secure the lot, the uh, stagecoach okay. line. Yeah. Well, it needs to make sure that the yeah the the stagecoach line can be secure against bandits. So, uh, so Elizabeth Hargraves, where, where is wants, this stagecoach line? Um, uh, Madam Charlotte says it's probably the local stagecoach, um, the Meltwater Express uh, coach line. So. So so like just, I, I, I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. So like it seems yeah. like we're going to be escorting it while it like travels somewhere. Uh, Madam Charlotte's like, I, I don't know that much details. That's why we've got the meeting this afternoon with Elizabeth, with Miss Hargraves or Miss Her, uh, Miss Harrington. Um, yeah. and so like, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. So I, I did expect you to, uh, I expected, uh, Peacock to take a little bit longer of time. I figured that, uh, some of you might not be up this early. Uh, so. Well, you know, I'm always up early on a Sunday. Oh, indeed. Indeed. Uh, so I, uh that's a pretty safe assumption, but no, this is good. This will allow me to uh, <clears throat> talk to some people about this uh, ahead of the meeting. Uh, might have some information. Uh, Moira, look, Moira looks a little conflicted because she's like, damn, now I can't rob this stagecoach line. <laughs> <laughs> this is a conflict of interest. It is. So she's like, yeah, no, I um, I, I might, I might know some things myself. Uh, it might, might be good to come to this meeting with a little more intel. So, so um, just a question for Randy. Yes. What do I know about like the law enforcement situation in this town? Because uh, mm -hmm. CJ's sure. first thought is like, this seems like a job for the sheriff more so than like just for random layabouts. If there is a sheriff back in the Wild West, there would be literally like one guy and he would just round up people in town. Like that's like okay. what they would do with a posse. But I don't know. This is obviously this is Randy's game. I don't know. what. Yeah. So I'm just like, I'm just asking. That's what exactly. I would, that's what exactly my thought. So, so, one let's, guy. Let, so let's let's talk about the sheriff, shall we? Yeah. Um, so uh, let's see. Let's find out some facts about the sheriff. Um, so I tell you what, Amelia, tell yes. me, tell me something. Um, tell me something the sheriff is good at or something that's good about the sheriff in town. Um, shoot. Something good about him. Um, or her. Or, or her. her. Whoever it is, I, I have decided that Moira and this person have a romantic tension going on. Oh, I love, Ooh. oh, I love that. That's great. <laughs> um, regardless of whoever this person is, but, um. Well, that, no, that's, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, so she she's she probably has a, a begrudging respect for this person because she's either been caught or nearly caught by this person but whereas you know in the past she's had a pretty easy time of it where um, is the one that got away <laughs> yeah exactly all right okay uh, yeah so she's what. like respects the like he's uh he or she is very thorough and um like actually good at their job and so she respects uh, that person um, right, so I, I, I feel like I feel like at... you should probably decide okay. the gender of this person because it's your character who has yeah. a romantic attachment. Yeah, it's gonna it, woman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, all right. So, um, so Zach, I'd like you to tell me something that the sheriff is really bad at. Something they're really bad at, or something uh, that, or something bad about them. Yeah. I, the first thing that came to mind just a second ago actually um, was like, I think they. Uh, will disappear for stretches and, and, and without explanation. And, 
I mean, I'm not saying long stretchers, but like they're supposed to be at their post kind of thing and they're not there and never really has a good explanation as to why. Oh, that's great. I love it. Great. So when they're uh, there, they're really good at their job, yeah, but right. sometimes they're just gone for. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it seems like because they're really good at their job, otherwise it seems like they're not just abandoning the, abandoning the job for its own sake. There must be something, some other greater reason. Yeah. Okay. So they disappear for stretches, never on time. Um, okay. Cool. I, I have a question, I guess, that like maybe someone else could answer. Um, why is this person the sheriff and not someone else? Because like if, if, well, if people don't Josh, if people don't like the job you're doing, you're not going to be sheriff for very long. That's kind of how it works. Well, well Josh, I was going to ask, like, how did they become sheriff? Ooh, um, so that's that, that's mm. exactly what you're asking. So tell me, how did how did they become sheriff? I think they're the sheriff because Madam Charlotte supports them. And what Madam Charlotte says says goes more often than not. I'm digging Damn. it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's see. Um, I need one more question for Dylan. So let's see. Dylan, tell me anything that you'd like to tell me about this sheriff. Um, I'm thinking she's got. Um, let's see here. She has a pet. I'm thinking let's give her um maybe a let's see here a gila monster <laughs> that that'd be fun. a fun one I like it <laughs> Oh my god gila, gila monster. monster just this big like big lizard on her shoulder all the time Good. Yeah that's that's all what I'm right. thinking she's she's got like a gila monster she's trained that'll be big fun Big sleepy lizard Oh <laughs> All right Wait, wait so... what's what's the what's the gila monster's name what does she call it Good question. Hmm. I'm going to fantasy name the generators first... for the sheriff's name, but you guys I was can like, name the Gila monster. Yeah. I was like, uh, the first thing that came to mind, because of course, Wild West and it's a lizard, it's Rango. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that the Gila monster might be named um, Moira's middle name. Oh my God. Oh, that's really good. That's really like, funny. No one, no one else knows Moira's middle name. So it's like a private thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I don't even know Moira's middle name, so yeah. well, I, <laughs> I don't mean, think I came up with one. Now's a good time. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, fantasy I mean, name generator. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's that's a well, lot. Like it feels it feels like a one syllable thing, like Moira blank. Da, 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 Haskell. I don't know. Jean? I know. Jean. I thought that was the first too. thing that came to my head too. It was Moira Jean. But oh, that's so I don't funny. Know. Uh, yeah, we can go with Jean. Jean the Gila Monster. Yeah. <laughs> that's so good. Maybe oh, like Sleepy great. Jean. Sleepy Jean. Sleepy Jean. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Uh, oh, and I love that too, because like Gene is kind of gender neutral, so it's like yeah. kind of ambiguous whether it's a reference to your name or not. Yeah, that's great. That's and really no one weird. wants to check the Gila monster to find out what it is. <laughs> no, no, not even the sheriff. The sheriff yeah, is just no. like it. Well, think, it is what it is. Same yeah, as me. And, yeah, and and the thing is, is, like everybody knows the Gila monster's name, but they they don't they don't know the connection, the oh, yeah. private yeah. connection. Um, can you guys see a notes section in Fari? Uh, is it the one with like the doodle icon? No, no, no. Okay, then those notes are for me. All right, okay. then let me go ahead. I will add. Uh, Would it be see. like an and I'm adding an NPC. Ooh, okay. Uh, oh, cool. Valentia Ruiz. Uh, yeah. and Valentia Ruiz is the sheriff. Um, so I have just added that NPC to the list. Um, and notes, Sheriff Valentina. Jean, the Gila monster. All right. So that is added as an NPC. You guys should see that. I've got it on a public board. You all see it? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Great. Uh, all right. So Valentia Ruiz, um, she is the sheriff. Uh, she has a, a, an unknown to everyone except for Moira and her romantic tension with Moira. Uh, Valentia is good at her job. 
although she does disappear for stretches and is rarely on time or where she's supposed to be. Um, no one knows exactly why. Uh, she got her job with Madame Charlotte's support. And yep, that covers everything. Great. That is an awesome NPC. Um, Yay. Excellent. Where were we in the game? <laughs> well, I had a, I did we have a question. Just, so I, I, was, I was wrapping really, up our meeting. Yeah. With we had received yeah. our mission yeah, briefing. Kidding, um, we were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. Because I, <laughs> so I, I run a biweekly game, so every when we got, come back, I'm like, what were we doing? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Weeks. So, yeah. So, Madam Charlotte says, "Hey, you know, come back in a little. Come back, you know, uh, this afternoon, and um, you know, Miss Harrington will be here, okay. uh, and um, you know, we can have you know our meeting." So, so if quick. the lot of you would like to do something, oh, sorry, Zach. Yeah, no, I, so I, I was intrigued by her little uh, newspaper conspiracy board. Um, yes. So I was wondering like if it was possible or if it did to be even significant to either roll or otherwise, like uh, to kind of see without being kind of making it obvious if I can put together kind of what she's trying to look at. Those. All right. Uh, I'm going to say that this sounds like a notice. Okay. Um, because you're trying to notice what's going on there. I could also have it be, uh, yeah, I, it would, hmm. You're I was going to say, I have, the, I have really high notice and investigate well, everything. Well, so here's, here's the thing. I'm like, it could also be an investigate because you're trying to kind of put pieces together for what you can see. Okay. Yeah, whatever makes um, sense. So I, I think it makes more sense as an investigate, um, but investigate, you might have to get closer and read them. Whereas notice you're just trying to kind of like pick up high level details. Or maybe so like you could try a deceive and see if you can like build a connection where she lets something slip. I don't think you've got the, the fictional grounds to, okay. to try and, yeah. and do that. Um, hmm. I could be talked into it for sure. Um, if you'd like to use notice, you can kind of try to notice if there's a pattern to what's going on. Yeah, if you I use think, investigate, you'll get more information. But yeah. the downside is I think I just kind of wanted to get a cursory glance at this. I'm not trying to bring attention to myself sure. about it. Like, yeah. All okay. right, great. Um, All right. I'm going to set the difficulty for this at a uh, three because you guys are having an active discussion in the room. Mm -hmm. um, so go ahead and uh, make All that right, roll. Holy right. snikes. That is a five, uh, nice. five against a three. That is not six. Now he has to make style. up what those that newspapers were about. <laughs> um, Hey, who's, who's not to say that I don't already have it written down. I'm just, I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> I don't. Hi, Brad. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, no, that, that I didn't prep at all. That was just flavor, but what, it, what the newspapers, <laughs> well, your flavor uh, intrigued me. Oh, and here's the thing. So I usually don't say like, okay, that was flavor or if I had prepped or not, um, because what we're doing actively at the table is setting the stage for truths that are in the game. So like, while I didn't actually prepare for what that is, we are building on the fly, like part of the backstory of Madame Charlotte or a little bit more about Madame Charlotte. Um, since this is learn to play fate, I'm kind of being explicit about what I'm doing yeah. so that, uh, you know, people can learn from that. So what these newspaper articles have in common that you notice is that um, so you're not sure about what the articles mean or what ties them together, but you do notice that like, you know, kind of like as you're looking at the, the papers that you see like, OK, there's the New York Times, there's the Philadelphia Inquirer, there's the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Um, you know, there's the, you know, the the St. Louis uh something or other inquire i'll use that again um mm -hmm. but basically like they aren't in this order but looking at all of the different papers that there are uh there is a a an east to west kind of migration on those papers hmm. so um you're not sure what they mean or or anything like that but you do notice that they aren't all like from certain city like there's a couple of duplicates like there's a couple in pittsburgh um but uh, but generally it is a, a, like you, you think about the path that you took getting out West or that other people have talked about getting out West West. And you're like, this is a very common path for people to come out West. So even though you're not sure how the stories connect, um, you have a feeling that the common thread is Madam Charlotte moving through this area or something moving through that area. Okay, cool. Interesting. Yes. 
So that is something that you know about Madame Charlotte. Oh. Uh, excellent. Now, at this point, you have some time between now and, and your meeting in the afternoon. We can. So uh, I, oh. I, I did want to Sorry. say something to Madame Charlotte, but I wanted to wait yeah. until everyone else was done. Sure. Yeah, so Mara's gonna I, be like, I, I'd love to stay in chat, but I got, I gotta, I gotta go try and find yeah. people. So yeah, I'll, I'll, bye everybody. I'll come. I'll be back for the meeting. All right. She lifts up her her shimmering cup uh, and 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 a cheers kind of like thing as you leave. All right. So uh, I kind of linger after everyone walks out, and I sort of turn to Madame Charlotte. Say, Madame Charlotte. Uh, Reverend. I I know you and I haven't always seen eye to eye, but something's come to my attention in the interim since I've been gone. Yes. It seems that you're aware of the 12 children in this, in our fine town who lack parents and need sustenance. The orphans, yes. Yes. I left them some funds from the collections and I was informed this morning that they aren't being provided for. It seems that some ne'er-do-well has undermined my effort at my institution to contribute to the public good. And I'm wondering if there's anything you could do to help me. Well, what kind of help are you asking for? I don't know who would have done this. Um, I'm sure you have no need for such a pittance. I see there's no shortage of demand for your services in our town. I guess I'm not sure where to start. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm not especially sure. Like I, you know, are, if you're asking for money, um, I make donations, you know, fairly regularly around town. Uh, you know, it helps keep people happy. Uh, you know, people who, who are uh, sunken into poverty very rarely contribute well to the public good. Uh, so I try and, you know, help people, you know, not be too terribly bad. I'm sorry to hear about the orphans. Uh, right now I've got so much on my plate. I can't really help you with all, any of that. Um, if you find out that someone has been stealing from the orphans, uh, bring it to my attention and, you know, I'll, I'll have John Harrington or Mr. Harrington. Uh, or, I'm sorry. I'll have Peacock, uh, you know, teach them a lesson. Well, I know you have your finger to the pulse as it were. Indeed. Um, if there's anything you find out, I hope you tell me. Well, of course. And I and I bow and I step out. Right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I'm thinking um, in, in this case, I want to invoke my stunt on um, which is one person, many faces for the sheriff. The sheriff mm. thinks my name is let's see here how many of these the sheriff thinks my name is zach cooper um and thinks that i'm a journalist and charlotte's in on this um she the way that she handles it though is just like okay i can provide cover for you for a while but i can't do it forever you've got to move on so mm -hmm. that's kind of the way that i'm thinking sure so that's my cover story that I am a reporter. Sounds good. Yep. So let's see. And I just wanted to set that one up. Sounds good. I've made a note of it. Ooh, nice. So, um, so yes, uh, spend a fate point. No, that's. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, create a I situation a aspect. Yep. All right. Uh, deceive instead of, all right. So let's go ahead and add, um, that was, it adds an aspect. So, um, I will add Zach Cooper reporter, uh, as an aspect on the scene. Um, and, um, I'll just indicate that that is Harrington's there. I don't think I can assign these to anyone no interesting cannot. cannot assign it all right that's fine that's not a big deal 
All right. So Zach Cooper, reporter. Sound good? Yep. All right. Fantastic. Uh, all right. So um, what do you want to do in the interim, everyone? Uh, we Moira, can fast forward or have some yeah. scenes. Moira would like to uh, invoke uh, her trouble, actually. And because she's wanted by the law, she has criminal contacts and she knows the general situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, so she would like to get in touch with some people and see what the threat level is on this uh, on this stagecoach, uh, at least from the because, you know, there's there's probably stuff like maybe if there's like, I don't know, they go through a valley and there's like a lot of falling rocks like she might not know about that. But like if there's yeah. any particular groups that are robbing these stagecoaches. Um, oh, sure. 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 Um, so yeah, go ahead and make a contacts roll. I'm going to set the difficulty for this uh, at a one. All right, so that is a three result against a one. So that is um, successful. It was an overcome. So what that means is you get some information. So hey. you you kind of talk to some of the seedy underbelly um, at the Shimmering Pint Saloon. Um, and basically they, like the, the folks that you tell you, tell you, um, you get the sense, let me look at my notes. Um, you get the sense that the Meltwater Express coach line has, it has a great record for transporting goods. Um, it, um, very rarely do bandits end up um, being successful against the Meltwater Express coach line. Um, I mean, occasionally, uh, you know, there are rumors that that occasionally bandits do manage to to get some things off of the stagecoach. But for the most part, it's one of the more secure stagecoach lines. So, All right. Uh, yeah, so, she, so, she just has more questions now because she's like, OK, you know why you know thinking after talking to a couple of people okay well then why is she so insistent on us providing additional security but obviously we'll find that out later yeah well so. one of the things that um that you also find out is that um, one of the reasons why the Meltwater express coach line uh is so successful is that they um it, they will um, from time to time have u.s marshals uh riding along with their stage coaches so mm -hmm. it's not all of them, but occasionally there will be U.S. Marshals. Are the U.S. Marshals from back east or are they from like around here? Uh, it's um, probably mostly from out here okay. uh, so that they've got a better sense of what's going on. So, But just like from, I guess you'd say, more developed areas. Yes. I think Marshals generally historically were like kind of covering a certain, like a large swath. I see. You yeah. know, we have a territory. Regional. Yeah, they probably would ride ride east to west, ride west to east, like back and forth. Yeah, like I know they do that on planes uh, now. They just kind of ride yeah. around on planes. Yeah. So. So yeah, that's what you found out. Interesting. Now, so the uh, the person from the Elizabeth person, she would be, she hadn't he hadn't spent any time in this town. She's like new, and like we'd be just be encountering her for the first time. Like we wouldn't have seen her before. Correct. Like you might okay. have seen her around town, but you wouldn't have known who she was or anything about her because like just one of the another person on town around town rather. Yeah. Oh, so you're going to look for the sheriff is what you're saying. Oh, no, I was I was trying to I was trying to think of uh, no, no, I was trying to think of how, if we would know better, like find a way of, if there's a way to find out more about her or mm. whatever. Kind of use that new risky contacts kind of aspects just to talk to some some seedy person about this. But I, I don't I don't know if that would even make sense. I mean, could you just like roll contacts to see if you can find anything and maybe invoke uh, That's it? what I just did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, mean. I guess so then. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. Yeah. I just want to see if I can All find right. anything about, about if anybody knows anything about her specifically. Sure. I'm going to set the difficulty for this uh, at a four because she okay. is relatively new uh, yeah. and she's also n like not famous. Um, and so uh, you don't like um, your fictional approach can be to reach out to your um, uh, risky contacts or like just contacts in general. Um, and then if you need to spend fate points, you can then say like, okay, I'm reaching out to my risky ones now. Sure. Um, but you can always say like, Hey, I'm just going to reach out to shady people. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. That's really cool. That is also, two. do we, do we want to take like a 15 minute break in a little bit? 
Uh, yeah. We're like close to halfway yeah. through the session. Yeah, we can do that. Um, we'll take a break here in the next 10 minutes or so after I wrap up cool. what everybody wants to do before you talk cool. to uh, Miss Harrington. Awesome. Um, so thank you for asking. Uh, so Peacock, you got a two, yeah. the difficulty is a four. Do you want to spend a yeah. fate point? Yeah, so what would a tie uh, mean on this? That's a great question. This is a, uh, an overcome role. So let's take a look at what we've got for that. Um, the actions. Uh, actions. I'm taking a look because for some reason, some of these things don't stick in my head. If you tie, it's success at a minor cost. Um, you're in a tough spot. The enemy gets a boost or you may take a hit. Alternatively, you fail, but you gain a boost. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll 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 say that uh I'll say she is is clear that she recently got a haircut, so I went and talked to the barber surgeon mm. um about what he may know about her, what he talked because you know everybody talks to their hairdresser kind of thing. Barber surgeon dentist. Barber surgeon dentist. And mm -hmm. I'll say yeah, I'll invoke that and spend a fate point to get bring it up to its eye. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. And so that success at a minor cost, which, as we said, could be a tough spot. Enemy gets a boost. Uh, I'm going to, um, uh, you know what? I'm going to give a boost uh, to um, to Miss Harrington uh, to use during mm. her talk later. Okay. Mm. Uh, all right. I've added that to the public board as a boost. All right. Uh, anyone else want to do anything before we well, take a break? Do I, do I find yes. anything out then? Or? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like, anyway, yes. So you do find out some information about Miss Harrington. Um, you find out that, um, so, you know, as I stated previously, her name is Elizabeth Harrington. Um, and uh, she is blind. So, mm, okay. Uh, it, it seems to be of like natural causes. It doesn't like based on the description that the uh, the barber surgeon told you, like it doesn't look like she was like blasted in the face or someone like took an ice cream scoop or anything like that. Um, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so no, she's just, she happens to be blind. Um, and okay. uh, that, and uh, she has a, um, a love for entertainment. Um, so you find out that ch -ch -ch -ch, I'm trying to f see here. Uh, she is, um, she is, uh, she very easily gave a loan to Miss Charlotte, uh, to help with the expansion of Miss Charlotte's so that the town can have better entertainment. Okay. Um, so, um, and entertainment isn't in quotes. It's just the, like the Miss Charlotte's, like there is the sex worker entertainment, but, um, you find out that part of what the expansion is, is going to be a stage, um, for more classical kinds of entertainment. So like, in fact, they're, they're going to be shipping a piano from out East uh, to Miss Charlotte's as Ooh. part of this renovation. Right. So the town will nice. have its first piano. So excellent. That is what you find out. Cool. All right. Who would like to go next? I'll do it. Um, All right. I want to have um, a scene where John goes in to wash up and he sees um the devil in every sil sl uh, silvered surface. Oh no! And he I... looks like the guy I was playing poker with earlier. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I look up and I notice him, you know, in the mirror, mm. grinning back at me. And he's and he's just looking at me and saying, "John, do you think you can do this forever?" And oh, that's good. Oh, and no, no, no. and it's yeah. <laughs> And at this point, he like John like freaks out, and um, I guess um, I'm not sure if we could call it a compel, um, but I'm thinking like that should be kind of the core of it. Oh well, we can uh, if you give me just a moment. All right, uh, this is great. I had something. I had something prepared that I I was like, I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to find a place for it. And you have provided me with a place for Ooh. it. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, nice. so, so yes. So you look into the camera. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me change my camera source here. 
Oh shit! Oh, dude. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> we have John. Values now, boys. <laughs> Hello, John. How are you? It seems that you were playing poker earlier, my friend. What are you doing here? I am always here. I am always with you, John. I am part of you now, John. You can't be rid of me. You can choose to not look in the mirror, but you know that I am here. I am your friend, John. I don't know why you don't embrace that. You gave me the mask. What else do you want? I want to be your friend, John. The mask is incredibly useful, isn't it? Yeah. But I no. This this is not This isn't how I wanted things to end. John, this is just the beginning. This isn't how things end. John, I really appreciate you doing that favor for me on the train. I'm going to offer you a compel, John Harrington. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I love it. The um, <laughs> going to offer you a compel on do, 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 the devil in, in every silvered surface. Um, John, you collected up some of the Reverend's blood uh, whenever it came out of his ears and was left behind. Yes. You collected it and passed it through a mirror to this entity. <laughs> Bro. Do you want that fate point? Yes. This this right. will be there you go. Oh god, this is gonna this is the setup for something great. I love it. So seriously. I love that the poor Reverend, like everything is falling apart for him, and we're just like, yes, chaos. <laughs> 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 Sell your blood. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, no. So, John, Great. John, listen, I don't have any particular requests or favors right now, but it's been a while since you've used the mask. So, I, yeah, I'm holding it in my hand right now and I'm thinking, what do you want me to do? Oh, I don't know. I think it might be interesting for you to pretend to be someone else for a while. All it doesn't right. ma it doesn't matter who just choose someone <sighs> don't say the reverend <laughs> yes no oh. i i think i think i know exactly who i'm going to impersonate i yeah that is oh, an excellent oh. choice john i like that the, a lot the, that is a great idea yeah mm -hmm. It's it's gonna be the sheriff. That's what I I'm was thinking. gonna say. Oh, that's, I knew yes. it. that's so good. That's I so knew good. it so because um, sheriff disappears mysteriously from time to time. Yeah, perfect. It's yeah. perfect for you. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> John, let's play our game. Let us con them, and scene. Oh, that's <laughs> so oh. <laughs> great. I love it. All right. Okay, so, um, so uh, yes. it's funny you mentioned that because the thing that CJ Haggard is going to do is make a beeline straight to the sheriff's office to try to get to the bottom of all this. Oh, However, shit. on the way there, he stops at the general store because he's got a wad of church money burning a hole in his pocket and some hungry orphans that need lunch. Aww. Which conveniently, aside from being the thing that he would do anyway, conveniently gives uh, gives... Uh, is it Harrington? Yeah, John. Yeah. Yeah, it conveniently gives John Harrington plenty of time to get in the position if he wants to do that. Oh. So here's, here's here's my thought, is that we do this scene at the general store, and then um, Moira uh, will go to... Um, We'll go to uh, where the sheriff usually is and uh -huh. encounter Mr. Harrington as the sheriff. Yeah. Uh, so, so Dylan, oh boy. Okay. get okay. ready for that. Prep yourself for that. So, uh, so is the is is the devil going to give me like a script to follow? Because that's what I'm thinking. Uh, He's... You know what? I tell you what. I will play. Um, I will play the the role of Harrington playing the sheriff. That oh way, my gosh! That way, oh, that way it's not too weird. <laughs> Um, All right. Okay. Uh, 
So if you would rather play that, I will happily pass that baton to you. But if you're more comfortable with it, I can do that too. Um, so. I guess as long as I know, because, you know, I, 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 the idea is like, it's, it's the devil talking through him. So, sure. Sure. um, if we could just as long as we know what he wants, that, that would be fine. Okay. All right. Uh, so Josh, let's go back to Reverend CJ. Uh, so yeah. Reverend, you go into the, uh, to the general store, general mm -hmm. store. Um, excuse me. Uh, yes, there are uh, three children playing tag amongst all of the barrels of goods and the shelves of goods uh, there. There is, of course, a, a, a giant um, uh, barrel full of, uh, like, pickles. Um, there's assorted, like, various uh, goods and sundries, um, food and stuff, if you will, uh, for you to get your food and your stuff. Uh, uh, behind the counter yelling, stop running. You're going to knock something over, um, is, uh, a, a middle-aged woman. She is, um, probably in her early thirties. Um, she is the, the mother of the children. Um, she has, um, she is beautiful. Uh, she has like very curly, um, auburn hair. Um, she obviously puts like work into it, making sure that the hair looks nice. Um, she's, uh, she is a little bit, um, huskier as she is kind of like, uh, has had three children, but she still is like very beautiful. And she, um, uh, she kind of welcomes you in like Reverend, Reverend, please come on in. Welcome. So real quick, are these three kids among the orphans or are they just like three kids? Uh, they're, that... they're hers. Okay. Cool, they're, cool. they're her children. Cool. Oh yes. Don't mind the children. They're playing their games. Take it, take it into the back. Take it, take it outside. I gave one of them um, a pat on the head as they run by. Uh, the child smiles and, uh, yeah, then it's, says, it's very cute. Yes. Yes. And then hits you really hard in the upper thigh and says tag. And I runs, flinch. Runs <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's really fun. What is it with little kids and going right for the crotch? I don't I know. Like, I said upper thigh. <laughs> I said upper thigh. I was kind. So I think it was probably What's the crotch and John Harrington is just quoting Bible verses in his head, like oh. suffer the children, suffer the children, suffer the children. <laughs> <laughs> this pain will pass. This pain yeah. will pass. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so yes. I. Uh, what's her name, by the way? Uh, Juniper. Uh, oh. I will. Uh, I will share it in our um, Zoom Slack. Zoom Slack. God. Uh, uh, Zoom chat is what I meant to say. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So, Juniper. So, Juniper, it's so lovely to see you. Oh, Reverend, thank you so much. Um, yeah, it is nice to see you as well. I, um, uh, Not much has changed around here. I got a, a new shipment of shovels. Um, oh. you know, some of the best ones have already gone, but I still have some ones that are pretty good. Um, the, the town continues to grow. So, uh, I heard that we're getting a bank, um, uh, which a will be bank. great because I could use some, um, some, uh, money to, to grow the store. That would be fantastic. Um, so yes, uh, it seems that, that everything is coming up roses. I'm so glad to hear it. I was I was wondering, do you know where those 12 little kids have gotten to? You know, the ones that, the, the ones with no, without parents, where, whereabouts are they right now? Uh, the orphans. You can say orphans, dear. It is not a four letter word. I just don't like labels. <laughs> well, well, as a shopkeeper, I have a tendency to like them myself because you know where the goods are. <laughs> um, I understand. Uh, would you care for a free candy? Uh, they are Werther's Original, a new treat that I've gotten from out east. Werther's Original? Those just came out. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know they'd made their way out this far west yet. Yes, yes. Would you care for a free sample? I would love one. I'd take it and put it in my pocket. All right. Um, so, yeah. So what can I help you with, dear? Well, um, I pull out the, the money and I say, well, uh, I'd like to just... You know, make sure the orphans get a good lunch this afternoon. And I was wondering what I could what I could buy for oh, you know certainly. twelve meals. Oh, uh, absolutely. Um, she she um, she's like, I will gather up some food for you. Um, she gathers up some um, uh, some salted meats. 
um, a couple of apples, um, a fairly good meal, um, far more than what, uh, far more food than what you're willing to pay for. She's kind of throwing a little bit of extra on top. Oh, um, she's like, I, I will, um, she said, this is, this is great. Um, I tell you what, I will see that, um, that the orphans get this. Um, what I'd really like for you is to be a deer and go in the back and play with the children. Um, or go outside and play with the children. Um, I look a little hesitant because, like, I'm still kind of high strung on my, like, you know, on the anger train. And then I soften and say, I'm sure I could make some time. Yes, I I, I do hope uh, you don't mind um, watching them for for uh, the next couple of hours. I, I need a few moments to myself. I'd love to. Uh, marvelous. Um, so, um, so, yes, you are... Uh, so she will deliver the food to the orphans. No problem. Um, Keep in mind, like this whole day, I've been wearing this big black robe. Like I never changed from when I was giving a sermon. Like I look ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you look like a preacher. Um, yeah. Now uh, you go in the back and play with the children. It is not a problem. Um, you have an aspect on you. Um, so it turns out that um, there is something strange about the general store. Um, the uh, the free samples that um, uh, that Juniper gives away, um, unbeknownst to just about everyone, including the Reverend, um, are is that is that if you take a free sample, you are kind of you are compelled to um, not fake compel. Uh, you are compelled to um, do a favor in return for Juniper. Um, oh, not cool. like, like, I mean, like, not like go and kill a man, um, right. kind of favors, but like various other kind of small Deep favors. Well, yeah. Right. Um, but uh, unload would, this box of peas, you what know? I wouldn't do for a Werther's right now. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of like, um, suggestion from Dungeons and Dragons. It's like, if it's yeah. a really bad suggestion, like uh, it's probably not going to be a thing, but very reasonable ones, like asking a preacher to watch the store and mind the kids for a couple of hours is very reasonable. Um, yeah. Cause like, it's not, so, it's not what CJ wanted to do, but yeah, it's like, yeah I can't, I can't say no. I can't say no. Um, so yes. So you uh, have an aspect called get Gash. I just called it Gesh real short. Um, I've added it to our aspect board. Um, the reason that I'm adding this to the aspect board because is because I want to compel it because right. I am an evil GM. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to offer you a fate point uh, to be seriously late to the meeting with Miss Harrington later today. I'll take it because you're because Juniper is going to take a while to to return back. So yeah. um, CJ, there is your fate point. I added it to your character sheet. So and like uh, let's be honest, CJ would re way rather spend the afternoon playing with some kids and solving a mystery. Like this is this is what he got into the cloth for. Exactly, exactly. And now all of you as players have a better understanding of the general store, um, but your characters do not because. I don't think any no of your characters yet, know no. that. No. So, no. Um, and that's one of the things that I really like about fate is the difference between player knowledge and character knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because now all of you know that if you take a free sample from the general store, there'll be this gesh that you'll have to like favor that you've got to do back for Juniper. Um, and you can choose to lean into that because it's fun or you can choose mm -hmm. to not because you don't want to. So, um, so yeah. All right, great. Um, let's do more Racine, and then we will take a short break. All right, cool. <laughs> I was just like, we're ha we're so into this. Like, <laughs> we were like, yeah, we're gonna take a break, and <laughs> then we kept doing stuff. So anyway, yes. Yeah. So um, after uh, going through at least all of her contacts in town, she's like, you know, might as well go see the sheriff before uh, before I go do this. Both to let her know uh, that we're doing this, see if she has any more information, or you know, and also just to drop by. Uh, so Moira kind of clambers up on the, the deck, you know, boots, you know, on the, the front uh, deck. And then, hey, V, you in there? Uh, excuse me. Uh, come on in. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. Yeah. And she, yeah. uh, that, hey. Uh, hey, Moira. How's it going? Uh, great. Um, good. Uh, uh, Anna 
job not a not a not a one that you got to arrest me over uh otherwise i wouldn't be um here uh i mean uh, technically i should be arresting you right now but you know <laughs> yeah but yeah. you know evidence being what it is you know what a shame, you know, like it's, it's just, it's just such a shame that, um, I, I keep remembering to wear gloves and, uh, <laughs> and anyway. almost admitting to doing things and, you know, uh, and, and <laughs> an earshot of the law. Yeah. Well, okay. 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 You, 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 hmm. anyway, another time you. I'm on it. I, 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 I have, I have, and she's like purposely looking away. I have yeah. a job to do. Okay. I have a job. I'm here for the job. Let's just do the job, the, the, the job, job, job things right now. Yes. Job things right now. And she sits down in the chair in front of the desk. So there's, you know, the Mount Water Express coach line. We're being hired to make sure it doesn't get robbed. Right. So that's anything else that's... you know about it? What that? I'm sorry. You being hired to not rob it? Yeah. No, of, of, of all the people to be hired not to rob it. Yes, I know. I, okay. I'm, I'm aware. Right. I'm aware of the irony. Uh, but uh, money's money. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. She kind of walks over to the calendar hanging on the wall, um, and she kind of looks at it. She's like, you know, it's really weird. It doesn't say opposite day here on the calendar, and so it's kind of bizarre. <laughs> I would imagine <laughs> that, like, you know, Moira. Uh, would be a little bit more interested in robbing the the stagecoach line. Yes, yes, I know. I'm aware. Uh, I am. I am. I am still very much interested in robbing this thing. But from the sounds of it, it's pretty well protected. And uh, there's there's U.S. Marshals. Which, listen, I'm not that good of a shot. Uh, better in a fight. Uh, but I'm not messing with the U.S. Marshal. And they they sound like they've got they've got fine. They've got fine defenses, so I'm I'm just really confused as to why we're being hired to protect it even more. Uh, I'm afraid anything? that I, I'm afraid that I I don't know anything about that. Um, it sounds like an interesting gig, and it sounds like something that you would probably be pretty good at, considering the fact that that you've typically been on the opposite side of that. Um, oh, exactly. Who's who's anyone else being hired along with you? Uh, usual folks, she says very occasionally. <laughs> uh, you know, just the, the, the reverend and a couple other people. Uh, yeah, wouldn't happen to be that, that Herbert fellow, would it? Uh, hmm, maybe. Peacock. Oh, Madam yeah. Madam Charlotte's man. Yeah, you got me talking again. God damn it. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I do what I can to try and make sure that, you know, uh, you put your mouth to use. Uh, so with all of the folks that you've got uh, doing your thing, sorry if that crossed the line. I'm so sorry. I, no, I'm trying not to laugh. I'm trying not to. Okay. I, I, I'm trying not to hyena laugh yeah. and interrupt the scene. That's okay. what my God. face okay. is We're for. At least one favorite. Okay. okay. That okay. one has. All right. Okay. I just needed to make sure because I, I have a very... <laughs> I have a sense of humor that sometimes is very bad. And it was, for me, I unintentionally say shit okay, like that all the time. Like, so it's okay. 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 It was like, it was like a, a, a clean, dirty joke because was, all the yeah. work is in, in people's oh, yeah. minds. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, that's, that's what I was going for, but I realized I like, like I'm just like, no. I'm live streaming this. And so like, <laughs> And no, just, I want to make sure. I, yeah, okay. yeah, I was trying not okay. to like scream laugh okay. because I do that okay. when I, yeah. So. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. All right. So. So, yeah, uh, you know, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Um, uh, who's the person who's hiring you? Uh, the, um, hmm, uh, Hartgraves, Her Harrington, El Elizabeth, the uh, this, this oh, the, vice the president banker. of the bank. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know much yeah, about I've... her either. Yeah, I don't know much about her either. I, I would figure that like maybe one of your friends, like maybe that um, that skilled John Harrington would have been able to find some information. Um, he's uh well, one He's second, because the, sher yeah. the sheriff no, the sheriff thinks my name is Zach Cooper. Oh, Zach Cooper. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that. Um, yeah, but this is you playing. But yeah, it, it, we have to be consistent. So yeah, what about that? 
Uh, what about that journalist, Zach Cooper, that's been hanging around? Have you managed to to get him off the beaten path and into a life of crime? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, does Moira does Moira know the whole deal with that or no? I'm going to say yeah. that um, I've consulted with Moira before saying, like, listen, okay. I, you know, I'm not <laughs> I'm not exactly on the best of terms with the sheriff. So sheriff thinks I'm someone else. Gotcha. Long story short. Yeah. So she'd be like, oh, yeah, him. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure he's he's out working his contacts too uh as as i've been all afternoon but really you're you're really sure you don't know anything about this vp i mean i feel like she would have been you would have been the first person that uh was contacted uh yeah i was i was busy i I was tending to some things and unfortunately i I haven't been uh around very much lately um so i didn't manage to to find out a whole lot um i did hear some things um for you that i wanted to pass along is that your your friend herbert um i've heard rumors that there's been a a, um heard rumors that there that that cane of his that peacock cane an item matching that description uh uh, something that's been rumored to have been stolen out east um and so I've been hearing rumors that it may be a, a stolen item. Uh, so, you know, uh, I would appreciate it greatly if you could find out some more information about uh, how Herbert came about that. Hmm. I could ask him, but I but I am the law. I'm actually going to use... Uh... I've got a bad feeling about this because both the fact that the sheriff is like, oh, I was too busy. And the the <laughs> odd interest in a random object has Moira being like, this is strange behavior. Okay, go ahead and make uh, a notice roll. Plus four. All right, so this is John. John, you have a plus four. Let's see what John has. John ends up yep. with a plus four as well. Oh, shit. Uh, I rolled it for you. So yeah. that right. is, um, so yeah, you have kind of like a weird feeling about uh, about the sheriff. You have a weird feeling. So that is, yeah, just something seems off. So... Um, what I'm going to say is that the then at some point, like John from, you know, from the inside is trying to reach up to um, to basically pull off the mask. Yeah. And it and it's it seems kind of weird, like because he can't really get all the way up. Um, but that's what I'm thinking. He's, he's trying, like trying to, to pull reach. Off. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> trying to pull off the mask. Oh, God. Uh. And yeah, Moira will kind of see this and be like, what, you got something on your face? And she walks over and kind of like does this on her. It's like, really? Really, baby? And then and what I'm thinking is, is that you actually feel, you you feel like a texture that isn't supposed to be there. No, no, let's, let's, let's keep this. No, I don't want to reveal this yet. So, Okay. um, okay. So, yeah, so Moira, you kind of reach for her face. She kind of, like, reaches up and grabs your hand, and you guys kind of, like, lock eyes in this, like, romantic kind of gaze. Um, and and she says, I I have to go. Uh, and leaves the scene. Um, she basically, like, she leaves because things so have gotten soon. kind of, like, awkward and uncomfortable. Um well, yeah, because and, I mean, she probably can 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 ascertain what was about to happen next, but like, mm-hmm. there is a dude inside <laughs> inside <laughs> of the devil. That's yes. not um, this person. So the devil is uh, like, I'm saving you <laughs> from this. Um, so yes, the dude so, and the devil. Yeah. So so uh, so Harrington, uh, you leave, and as you're kind of like, you know, you you walk out and you kind of see your reflection. Um, in kind of like a silver mirror that's kind of like like laid you know out outside like the general store that um, is for sale. Uh, you see the uh, you see yourself, um, mm. and uh, he says, "Good job, excellent work." Oh, you you're are, you're a true professional. You are vile. And then and then 
And then what happens is, is I just, I just take out my fist and I punch the mirror. That's what I'm All thinking. All right, there you go. Oh, why is no? I want my camera on. I want my camera. <laughs> there we go. All right. Yes. All right. Uh, you smash and break the mirror. All right. Oh, and, shit. All right. So this is where we're going to take a five minute break when everybody gets back together to talk to uh, to Miss Harrington, the bank. Yes. Let's um, do it. We're right. going to we're going to gather. We're, we're going to take five minutes. Um, so that would be three thirty seven Eastern. We'll get back here. OK. All right. All right. Be right back.
for if anyone forgets um yes in the in the chat <clears throat> we were just wondering uh was gene was 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 old sleepy gene on uh, valentina's shoulder in that last conversation no gene was okay. not in the scene that was also part of the reason why I'm, both the way she was acting she, she mm -hmm. at first more it was like you know maybe jeans in like the back room or like sleeping on the chair or something but then she's like no this is really weird <laughs> Yeah, well, the thing is, like, Jean isn't necessarily always, like, front and center in the scene. Yeah, like, you know, you like, know. maybe. Yeah, but that was one of the reasons I was kind of thinking. Because it's like, yeah. she's not I've, there. I've got two cats in a three-bedroom house. Like, sometimes I don't see them. <laughs> well, yeah, because so. they just, yeah. I, he's Maybe he's just off chilling in the back room. Well, and lizards know. need to, like, bask and stuff. Like, they, yeah. they, they, they're... Lizards are like even lower interaction maintenance than cats. <laughs> like for real, like you, you can just like go on vacation for a couple of days if you have a lizard and like, it's probably fine. Cool. All right, let's get back to the game. All right, yes. so uh, let's see. And just Amelia to acknowledge that you said that 4.30 Eastern Standard Time, um, you could stay on the call, but not on video. Um, so we're gonna try and be mindful of that. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if we're not. a little bit longer, I think it's fine. But yeah, okay, I'm uh, yeah. I'm trying to target it correctly to respect everyone's time. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge that that way we all kept that in mind too. Yeah. All right, so um, so it is now uh, you are back at the construction site that is Madame Charlotte's um, as it's getting built. Um, uh, uh, the, the office is just a little bit more cramped, um, sitting in, uh, Madam Charlotte's seat is, uh, Elizabeth Hargraves. Um, I'm sorry, not Hargraves. I keep saying the wrong thing. Harrington. Um, uh, Elizabeth Harrington. Uh, she is a, um, she's in her early fifties. Uh, she is blind. Uh, she, mm -hmm. she has a walking stick. Um, there is, um, a, a gentleman like out standing outside the office that is someone who kind of like helps her along, um, and get around, but he's obviously like the help. Um, she is dressed in, uh, exquisite, exquisitely tailored clothes, um, uh, showing not a single ankle, um, and covering up her collarbone. Um, so conservatively dressed. Um, and, uh, uh, she, she, you know, she introduces herself as I'm Elizabeth Harrington, vice president of, um, where's the bank name? Uh, Grand Fortune Bank Corporation, a subsidiary of the Gold Alliance Financial Holdings. Um, and it is a, a pleasure to meet all of your acquaintances. Pleasure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess let's just get get right to business, uh, shall we, like, ma'am? Uh, let's get to brass tacks. Yeah. Uh, so you want us to see what potential uh, pitfalls you, the uh, Meltwater Express coastline could have uh, in in bringing uh, your money back and forth? Uh, if I. I'm perfectly honest with you. I've, I, I mean, I don't know what my uh, companions have been up to in the past couple hours, but I've uh, done my own investigating, and uh, honestly, it looks pretty secure. Uh, indeed, indeed, it so, is quite secure. Yeah. So, are you just like looking for it to be extra secure? I mean, I if there's U.S. U.S. Marshals is is the rumor that travel on on these coaches. Uh, hmm. Not sure what what extra security we could provide. Uh, oh, oh, there there seems to be a bit of confusion there, Moira. I wasn't, mm -hmm. I, I didn't come to Madame Charlotte to find someone to provide extra security for the, the Meltwater Express coach line. I w came to hire you to try and prove that their security is not all that. I'd like you to rob them. Oh. See, that's more my style. Uh. <laughs> that's, that's why I came to Madame Charlotte. If I needed <laughs> extra security, I would have hired some of the thugs from around yeah, town. definitely to... perked up around this. Yeah, no, I wanted you to to attempt to steal something from the from the Meltwater Express coach line. You see, my bank is about to invest quite heavily in the Meltwater, and I want to um, make sure that either their security is as top-notch as they think it is. Um, so 
if you are unsuccessful, then their security is top notch and it makes uh, makes a lot of sense to invest uh, in the Meltwater. Uh, however, if you are able to, uh, you know, dupe them, con them and, you know, uh, manage to steal that which we or that which the bank is hiring you to steal, um, which, of course, we will work it out with the Meltwater uh, appropriately um, because uh, but. Uh, that means that our investment will will cost much less and we can get much more for our money as we have proven that their security is not as tight as they think it is and that will drive down the bargaining price for our investment. So it really is a win-win for the bank. No, that uh, that that makes a great deal more sense than uh, than the security thing. Uh, right. So. Well, OK, well, I'm looking at this from a whole new angle then. So. Uh, do you do you happen to have have a map of the route it'll be traveling or, or anything like that? Because now I'm now I'm thinking about how to rob this thing. So uh, certainly she she produces a um, uh, a folder and she begins kind of like bringing out a, a map of the territory um, as this happens. Um, uh, Reverend CJ, uh, you look out the window uh, and you see that rain is beginning to fall. Wait, um, wait, hold up, hold up real quick. Hold up real quick. So you said earlier that I was going to be like pretty late. Oh, yeah, evening. yeah. I'm sorry. You're you. So you are going I to be incredibly I was wondering late. if I sorry. could compel too clean for the West to have no idea that we're robbing it. Yeah. You come in uh, after the robbing discussion? Yes. Yes. That's and I'm I was like, I, I can't wait to protect your train. <laughs> that is perfect. Yes. Oh um, boy, yes. Uh, so, so yes. Um, I will give you a fate point, Reverend. Um, you are too clean for the West. You don't know that, like, all of the discussion is going to be centered around, um, you know, the the security, what's going on, and yeah. um, uh, it's just going to work out that <laughs> it is completely misunderstood. I'm like too busy thinking about hungry orphans for the concept of insurance fraud to even cross my mind. Uh, yes, sounds good. Um, all right, uh, who has a good notice? Moira has a good notice, but we've yeah. also been doing a lot with her. Herbert Peacock, let's go with yeah. you since you've got a pretty decent notice. Um, trying to move that spotlight around. Uh, so Peacock, um, while all of this kind of you know uh, discussion is going on and uh, um, uh, Miss Harrington is providing the details. Um, and just to confirm, no relation to John Harrington. Um, uh, as you're going through all of these details, uh, you look out the window and it has begun to rain. The rain is not uncommon um, uh, out west, but the color of it sure is bizarre as red rain is falling down from the heavens. Okay. Um, Why well, immediately interrupt the conversation? Like, uh, hey, um, guys, you might want to take a look at this. What the hell? What the hell's going on? Uh, I, think, I do think where's that the reverend when we need him? Yeah, I think uh, I'd be inclined to just immediately. Well, the reverend's out. the reverend's there. You guys had the discussion about it being okay. Robbery. Oh, like he's here now. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, and the reverend arrived. Came as you guys in right were going after over that. The okay, I didn't know and, if we were and, done with that. Okay. Okay, uh, I didn't know I'm if we sorry, skipped that. For the record, no, no, no. For the record, when the reverend comes in, he's immediately like smitten by a beautiful woman who's dressed very conservatively. <laughs> yeah, I think she's I, also I, in pretty... her fifties. So apparently, like you like cougars. That's cool. Uh, I don't hey. like labels. No judging. I think I, no judging. No judging. I think I pretty, no. Um, immediately run outside to, to see what the hell's going on. So, so where is John in the scene? It. Like, he was he was he present the whole time, yes. or was he okay? Yeah, because no, I'm were, thinking present. Yeah. Um. Just at yeah. Just at this point, like, um, does he have any like insight onto the red rain? Like, is it is it from? the devil in the mirror like no. does he have a you have, awareness you have no idea where it's from no idea where oh it's boy. from all right no. oh boy but um could yeah. i make a lore roll to try to figure out what's going on here <laughs> absolutely please do i'm gonna set also really difficulty. quick oh yes oh has the gesh aspect expired on me oh yeah yeah that's okay. that you you spent that so let me go ahead and trash okay. that aspect 
Um, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to. No, God is watching you. We're gonna leave that up. Um, <laughs> I, I I'm waiting to cash that in. Yeah, he's still watching. All right. So, um, so yeah. So what? Um, go ahead and make a lore roll. I'm gonna set the difficulty for this at a two, preacher man. Okay. Um, I just make a. Dang. All right, that is a two result, uh, or a four result, um, which is a success, but not success with style. Uh, so you are, um, so yeah, Red Rain, this is definitely an ill omen. Like something mm. like really evil is going on. Um, uh, like in town, in the area, something evil has come to town. Um, someone's working dark magics. This is, this is a sign that something is definitely going wrong in this okay time. so so i turn to the rest of the, the group and i say brothers and sisters i believe we are in extra biblical territory yeah i it looks at oh, the this frogs just come. not bode well for us Yeah, this is the this is the kind of shit from my husband's Bible. He's got the uh, the, the the Jewish one the, yeah. with all the, you know. I believe you're referring to the apocrypha. Yes. I think I don't know. I don't know. I didn't read the dang thing. Probably but uh, yeah, this is not good. Choice. This is not good. Let's. Yeah, let's um, investigate this. So our, 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 she kind of like pops back inside and it's like, um, Lady Harrington, um, it, it is raining uh, red something uh were you meaning for us to do this today uh no this was something that that we were going to plan for the future and i think that this is a particularly ill omen um she kind of yeah. looks at madam looks at madam charlotte and says i think that i'm going to be uh canceling uh and closes like gathers everything up back into her folder and says kind of uh, i appreciate everyone's time um she she does leave like uh she hands an envelope to madam charlotte and says like i don't want you to be at a complete loss um but i think that we're done here uh and she's going to gather up her her belongings um her man comes and i've got a bad uh, feeling about out. this <laughs> i yeah. was gonna say she, i would i would love to to get some insight as to uh, why immediately yeah i think somebody needs to tail her yeah i think we should um but yeah, like uh, presuming they, they left first, we let them leave. Like, yeah, we've uh, yeah, kind of had yeah, this basically, conversation. Yeah. Of like, All right. Hmm. Let's see who's got. Um, does anyone have stealth? Stealth. Um, John Harrington and Moira have two stealth. Oh, this, this would be great, too, because like John knows what oh, happened before. No! Yes. Of course it's so we're gonna we could go out the both of us and that would be a good setup. I think that'd be great. So so yeah, Moira and Moira and John decide to um uh decide to tail um Lady Her Harrington. At least at least for a little while, because like what what the, what the hell, you know, like just a little bit of red food coloring and, and she's gone like what the yeah that's not good i say the knowing full well blood, that like and it's suspicious that she leaves well i mean it and i mean it is it is yeah. suspicious but i mean yeah. it's yeah i mean right. it's it's a weird town there's probably been weirder than this <laughs> all right so um so john and moira are going to tail uh miss harrington uh, so all Real right. quick, are yes. whose house are we in? Are we in? We're in uh, Charlotte's. You're in place. Madame Charlotte's. Yeah. Okay. I would like okay. to invoke an aspect to declare in detail about the situation, if that's okay. Ooh. Well, t let's talk about what do you want to declare. So I would like to declare that one of the reasons for uh, CJ's sort of tense but cooperative relationship with Madame Charlotte is that she keeps a library in the basement of forbidden tomes. Oh, interesting. I'm good with that, who, um, who, who, who keeps what in the basement? Madame Charlotte has oh, a Charlotte library okay. of forbidden tomes. Yeah, and, like, um, and we're not talking like full, full blown. Like she's 
she's in league with like the we, devil and we all stuff. know this i'm imagining it's like a dozen books um yeah yeah she has some uh, demonology texts Yes. So, so Reverend, um, is this something that your group knows about, or is this something that, um, this is probably right. something that I know about and okay. she knows about, and I would think maybe Harrington is aware of it, but that's probably Harrington as far or Peacock. As it goes. Uh, Ooh. Oh yeah. Cause, uh, Peacock would. Okay. So Peacock for sure knows it exists and has probably even been down there. Um, cause okay. he's just, he grew, he grew up with her, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I would imagine you grew up, she took me in, yeah. Yeah, you grew up with this room that's like, hey, don't ever go in here. But like, as you got older, you figured out what was in there. Sounds good, yeah. Um, and Harrington is maybe like vaguely aware that she could get a hold of demonology information if she wanted to. But All right. like, other than, yeah, other than me and Peacock, no one knows like the extent of her collection. Uh, I don't even know where she got it. All right. Uh, so, so I assume that you're going to do something with this, Reverend. Yeah. So I, 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 I turned to Madame Charlotte and said, "Miss Charlotte, I would like to take a visit to your library." Uh, I think that that would be most pressing. Um, so, as, as like uh, Reverend and Madame Charlotte get up to kind of like go out of the room to like get to um, uh, the basement, um, Moira. Uh, you notice out the window, uh, you see the, um, the proprietor of the general store, Juniper. Um, she is, um, uh, just looking and, uh, just frightened and shell shocked and just kind of like walking like slowly through town. She is, uh, she is covered, uh, in what appears to be blood. Um, and she uh -oh. collapses in the middle of the street. Oh no. Uh, what, what, the, what, what, the, and she runs over and, and like checks her, uh, to see if she's like, okay, alive, uh, all yeah. of these things. She's, she is in shock. Uh, and the only words that you get out of her are the children. Oh no. Um, uh, as oh, you're standing no. out there in the rain, the red rain, you realize that it is not thin like water. It is thick like blood. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just hold up my fingers. I'm like, you know, and I'm, and I'm feeling the, the viscosity of the rain and the rain. And I go, we better get moving quick. Cause this is blood. Okay. Well, I, she, she's torn between, she wants to know what the heck uh, was going on with Mrs. Harrington, but she's a little bit more concerned for obviously the, the children now um and she turns to uh she turns to uh john and is like listen i as much as i'd like to f to follow that trail for for mrs harrington we'll have to figure that out some other time because uh, uh i i i need to uh, let's let's pick her up and, and and get her back on the at least the porch out of this rain and see what's going on with these children yep so we both kind of lift her up and mm -hmm. yeah set her on the porch go in the general store yep all right. Um, Peacock, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, I was just, I was just thinking that because before, before um, Rev said what he said, uh, I was thinking that we uh, had an idea for something for us to do together. So maybe I, I think uh, I would either, my thought would be that I would go with him kind of in a thought of like, this is, you know, I'm, I'm kind of protective of, of, of Charlotte and what she cares for. So I don't want anybody just messing with everything. So I think I'd probably, um, probably go with him. To see what's going on. My other thought in general was to find, you know, take a look at whatever NPCs we got going on or the barber surgeon or whatever. And I think this is like blood going on and like talking to somebody who knows, uh, you know, about shady stuff with blood. Mm -hmm. see All right. So you're going to go out. talk to the barber like. surgeon. Sure. The reverend is going to go look in the basement and then Moira and Harrington are going to go check out the children. Mm -hmm. Am I understanding everyone's intentions? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Or I mean, or for sake oh, of time, oh. I can just stick with with the Reverend. You know, if we have if, if Peacock to... actually, if if you if you're like kind of coming with us and don't like have a super clear plan, I would definitely turn to you and say, Mister Peacock, you are welcome to come assist us in our research. But I'm deeply concerned about the children and, in particular, the orphans. I haven't seen them all day. 
you haven't seen the orphans all day, says Amelia. <laughs> Where's the blood coming from? <laughs> so what do you suggest I do about it then, Rev? Well, the choice is yours. We would appreciate your help here, but if I knew where these orphans were or that they were provided for, it would take a great weight off of my mind. All right. Well, yeah, then I think I'll, I'll uh, I would head then to where I said, because I, mean, I can't, I would, the only place to, because uh, what Juniper would be the one to ask and she's collapsed in the street. So, uh, you, uh, but, yeah, do you know that though? Oh, yeah. I don't yeah, know. If I, so, so, I mean, well, yeah, but if I, if I ran out and then saw yeah. that, obviously, oh, yeah, I'd yeah. Okay, yeah. turn to there. So, yeah, because uh, like Juniper, when she says the kids, she could be talking about her own kids, but like the we first don't, we thought, don't know. the first thought that pops into CJ's mind when the rain starts is like, oh, I have to fix this. The second thought that pops into his head is like, but what about the orphans? Because like I've been trying to f- fix their problem all day, I haven't really made any progress, and I haven't even seen them. Mm-hmm. So then, I, yeah, I go to the person I know knows about blood. All right, it's all it sounds, sounds, sounds good. Yeah. We're going to start with um, with the Reverend. So Reverend, you go down into the basement. Um, it's uh, There's a lot of storage in the basement, um, you know, mostly for like for her establishment. Um, but she does take you back to a, uh, a locked trunk. Uh, and she opens up the trunk and inside are the uh, are those arcane books like her her library of forbidden texts. I flinch seeing them. Like, I know they're there. I've seen them before, but every time it gets me. I can just feel, like, the evil rolling off of them. Mm. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, I'm... Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at... Oh, Peacock needs fate points. Everybody else is great on fate points. Never mind. Go ahead. What would, what would you like to do? Um, I mean, I don't know if I need to roll lore again, but like, I'm just going to start because I'm, I'm familiar ish with this library. I've consulted it before. Yeah. I'm just going to mm-hmm. bust open the relevant tome, uh, find what I need to find out. And then I will open my mouth and exposition will happen. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Fair enough. So I don't know if I need um, to say what I'm going to say or if it's better for you to do. Oh, mm. Trying to think of the best way to put this. I'm trying to organize things to to be yeah to to be good. Um, okay, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that like um, okay. So what you're going to um, you kind of like confirm through the books um, that this um, bloody rain. Um, is a um, uh, is an ill omen, um, one tied to um, a summoning of a devil or a demon. So, um, so that is part of what you uncover. Uh, I am going to. I'm still going to do this. I want to offer you a compel. I'm going to offer you a compel on God is watching you, um, and uh, you are going to uh, palm one of the smaller books. And in Madame Charlotte's collection, uh, and you are going to burn it later because it's just, it is too evil to be known about. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I like that because, like, I tolerate Madame Charlotte's. Ah, that's really tough, though. Like, because it would be very dishonest. Do it. Do it. it, Because I want to, I want to see it on your person. That's going to be great. Uh, I'm just trying to think, like, CJ is like the straightest arrow that was ever shot out of a bow. And it's like, so he. His integrity wouldn't allow him to betray Miss Charlotte's trust, even though like she he doesn't see eye to eye with her. And he recognizes that like her letting him have access to this library is a concession on her part, and he needs to respect and respect mm. her trust. But okay. also, okay. Oh. but also one of these books is like really evil. Um I'm having a hard time deciding. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Do it. The question is, do you How? want a fate point or do you want to pay a fate point? <laughs> yeah. How evil it just is this It's a great book? drama. Oh, it's so evil you have to steal it from someone who is trusting you with this collection. 
maybe it's like you know like in one of the books it's like oh the omens and stuff but this one is like chained together and stuff but you know inside it's like how to do evil shit <laughs> okay so you know? the, the the narrative justification i see for like cj being okay doing this in yeah. his own mind is like he's tried to explain to madame charlotte how dangerous this book is and she hasn't listened She's mm -hmm. been like, oh, that's fun. Isn't that spicy? And he's like, you don't understand. This is like, this is actually like, I don't think you get it. How bad this is. Uh, and she never uses it. And it's for reference. It's for, re like, yeah. it's, it's, and maybe CJ is kind of panicking a little bit. Uh, this is something he might regret later and he hasn't necessarily made up his mind to burn it. But he's like, I just can't with this right now. And he palms it. Hmm. That's no, oh, that's so hard. That's so hard though. That's so hard. Cause do like it. having yeah, it on his person also, is going to, me. it makes sense to me to do it. Cause like you're, I mean, you're this guy, you're gonna be prioritizing your, you know, your holy commitments more yeah. than commitments to the person. I would there think. can be no holy commitments without moral commitments, Peacock. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I think he does it, but he's not really thinking straight and he doesn't have a plan. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I will right. add a fate point there. Um, nice. so, and I'm going to add a book, uh, or add an aspect, uh, stolen book to, uh, to the board just so that we could possibly compel it later and create problems with you with Peacock. Gosh, um, I hate this. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, great. Uh, all right. So let's go to Peacock. Peacock, um, you go to the local barber surgeon whose name is, uh, Stephen Todd, um, uh, hey, listen, you guys did this in, in Discord. I didn't do this. Um, Stephen Todd, um, the, the local bar. named Stephen Todd. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh yes. that's why I was like, okay. doing that face, because I was like, <laughs> Almost like I Sweeney get it. Todd, yeah. Um, I mean, I right. wasn't going to make that connection. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so yeah, so, so Peacock, um, uh, Stephen Todd is just kind of like, uh, sitting out on his porch on a rocking chair, um, just kind of watching the rain just lazily watching the blood go by um yeah Man, i love blood uh, <laughs> he's like oh it's great yeah that's a so normal I thing can, to say yeah so i uh i can see you've seen what's going on here uh well i mean considering the fact that you're currently covered in a bunch of blood uh coming from the heavens i can see that something weird is going on yeah yeah i'm not pleased with it they haven't invented dry cleaning yet <laughs> um, uh, if only they do that uh so you and i know but both know that you know some stuff when it comes to blood now oh, indeed, uh, as a barber surgeon it's part of mm -hmm. what i need to know mm -hmm. so uh have any idea why this might be going on what might have happened around here recently that could have brought this on us oh. do you have any personal connection to it uh i tell you what, do me a favor uh, Peacock, please roll. Uh, you're trying to get information out of him. Um, mm -hmm. You can choose to roll contacts. I'm looking at your okay. skills. Uh, you can yeah. roll contacts to try and like, you know, basically like you've talked to him about stuff like this before. Yeah. Um, you could try to trick information out of him with deceive if you wanted to, or try a, a you know, a different skill if you wanted to. But those are my suggestions. Yeah, I'm not thinking of a of a good way unless somebody else has a suggestion. I'm not thinking of a good way to like go about tricking a bit about it because it's so clear what's going on around us. So I, I think yeah. I think context makes the most sense. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, go uh, ahead and roll that. I'm going to set the difficulty for that at a two. All right. Okay. I think uh, I think in this case I'd like to uh, yeah to invoke uh, the uh, what is it the um well, risky contact just so you know you can spend that fate point if you want you can also okay. choose to succeed at a cost um okay. because this is that, this, this is well let's figure that out let's see um so you want to know some information about what you know could be causing this and what the source of this might be um uh you know um, I'm going to say that the cost of this is that you're going to have to um, get a haircut and a shave by the barber. Oh, God. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's very good. 
Yeah, let's do that. All right, that's going I like, to. Yeah, I like digging into the trouble in this. this one. Yeah, that's that's going to that's going to cost you time in this situation. Um, okay. So, um, so Stephen Todd, um, you know, warms your face up, cuts your hair, gives you the whole like experience while talking about like you know what, you know, blood, like everything, you know, uh, just about everything worthwhile bleeds. Um, you know, blood fuels things. When blood comes down from the heavens, the question that you have to ask yourself is, you know, is the world itself bleeding? There is probably a cut in the world causing that blood to pour forth. Um, something is trying to get into our world. Um, Can I ask kind of a follow-up question related to this sure. role? Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, just because of kind of the way the Rev sent me, you know, I, so... Yeah, but the reverend's been telling me that there's these orphans that nobody can find. Now, could mm-hmm. that have any connection to what's going on with here? Well, did somebody have done something awful? Uh, entirely possible. The 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 innocent uh, is you know the <laughs> innocent blood is quite powerful uh, for purposes such as these. No, <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't like so, it. So yes, if if the orphans have gone missing, uh, I'm afraid that um, of what you'll find. But you don't know anything about that personally. No, no, I don't have anything. <laughs> oh, no. If I knew well, anything about it personally, I don't think that I'd be sitting in my head. You would have found me sitting in my rocking chair on my front porch. Well, I suppose that's fair. Yes. Okay. Um. He nicks you just a little bit as he's shaving oh. and apologizes. Oh, yeah, I'm uh, sure it was an accident. <laughs> yes. uh, he puts some oh. rubbing alcohol on it to to make sure that oh. it doesn't get infected or anything. It's terrible. Uh, oh. Yes. Uh, all right. So now we go to Harrington and Moira, who are going to try and find the orphans and check on them, right? Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. Okay. yeah, we're looking for the kids. So I'm not sure still if it's her kids or other kids or if they're even really kids I, we don't know what the we, we, we're just investigating the general store because she came out but covered in blood we don't know what that situation's about so yep yeah we go in the general score uh, you anything? find that that her kids are there they're playing a, a game of tag the um uh the barrel of pickles has been knocked over and they're all three of them are kind of like yelling at each other like oh, i didn't do it no that was you Blah. playing the blame game gotcha Myra will kind of crouch down to him and be like, "Have have have listen any, here? I uh, know. Listen here. Uh, have 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 you three uh, seen anything? Uh, your your mom is not doing well right now, and um, there's very strange rain outside. Uh, you're fine, clearly. Uh, have what have you seen? It's raining outside. That's so cool. Don't go, Why? Don't, oh don't, man! Don't, don't 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 go outside. No 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 no, look, no no no. You are crazy. Covered in blood." Yeah, it's did rain- like a it's, cow it's give birth or something? No, it's it's raining blood. Um, uh, please stay it's inside. It's raining blood. That is no. so cool. It is a little cool, but it's it's a little terrifying. Um, um, please stay. Moira is not great with kids. Um, please, please, <laughs> please, just stay. Um, here and um, you 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 really didn't see anything, really. Okay. You just been playing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, we've been playing tag. We we finished playing with uh you know with a reverend. Um, you know he's really good at tag. Um, and like mm-hmm. that was about it. Yeah, he he said a bunch of words before he left, and you know, and we've been playing inside ever since. Okay. Uh, that's good. Um, great. Yeah, yeah just continue playing inside, uh, kids. Uh, nothing. Nothing. Well, us adults will figure this out. Uh. Have a great day. Don't we worry promise about the to stay in. We promise to stay inside, and the camera shows that all three kids have their fingers crossed behind their backs. I know. <laughs> Moira though will like. I don't know if I need to roll for this or whatever, but she would like lock the doors in a like. <laughs> There's no way where the, she couldn't open it. You know, lock yeah, it. Open it. Uh, I mean, you'd have to, to really like, yeah, it, jam it the door from like the other side. And stuff. Oh yeah, there's doors. There's a the back other door side. too, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, She'd lock and, the door, but no, it probably wouldn't stop them. Um, these kids have probably escaped from the locked general store before. Oh, oh definitely. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, she's like, those kids are going to be gone the second we turn our back on. Uh, <laughs> well, no doubt. At least they're safe, though. Um, 
I how have an idea. Those, how about those missing orphans, though? Uh, I have a bad feeling that this is related, she says, wiping make... some of the blood off of her cheek. Yeah. Um... You know what? Hmm. Anywhere in town that's that's good for sacrificing people? <laughs> I mean, would it make sense for you guys to ask the kids about if they've seen the other kids? I mean, kids play with each other. Yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking. This is true. So John, John is going to ask. Um, Turn right around the, other... the door. <laughs> yeah, you didn't see the other kids, did you? Well, the 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 orphans we we haven't seen them today, but we usually play with them in the church whenever like there's no um, uh, uh, no sermons going on. It's great. Um, we move the pews around and we arrange them and we play tag. Um, uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Would they have not come in for lunch? Wouldn't wasn't their mom providing that for them? That or their mom was providing lunch for the orphans. I mean, has that time gone by yet or no? Uh, yeah, yeah. She definitely like putting like. Um, uh, it's obvious that she had gone to feed the orphans um, and and would have had time to come back. Uh, okay. Oh right, time. right, right. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So we've asked the kids that. So she's on the porch. Like, is she just passed out at this point, or is she's she... she's in shock and she's not shock. really responding okay. to anything? Yeah. No. Never mind. Won't, won't can't ask her anything. She's in shock. And like, yeah. Yeah. Moira will like have gotten her like s- left some like food and like some water mm-hmm. by her. Uh, but she's like, I you know, do we put her inside with her kids? I you know, I guess right. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. it's. Should we get a medic or something? Maybe yeah, let's, uh let's who's see Steven? if we can Steven, yeah. Yeah, I guess Steven. Yeah. No, let's let's bring her inside with her kids and then go grab Steven, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a good plan. And so like they bring her in and sure. set yeah. her with the kids that, and that all happens. You food. you find that Peacock has gotten a haircut and a shave. Um It's fresh to and... death. <laughs> I bet. And my Moira would be like, "Well, this is going on. You've been getting a haircut. Come on, with man. this clean face, but otherwise covered in blood." I know. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what? Yeah, I yeah, I have no idea. We've anyway, been having we're... a chat about the weather. Well, yeah, exactly. They have they have been doing relevant things, but she doesn't know that. But she goes, yeah. "Okay, the 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 general store owner, uh, uh, Juniper. She she's she's in shock. You're gonna, uh, Mr. Todd. You're gonna need to go 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 help her. She's." We, we put her back in the general store, but she stumbled out completely covered oh, in blood. Oh, sure. I'll, I'll uh, go over and make sure that the children are safe. Yes, please. Make sure she and the children are safe. She's she's going to need some maybe some treatment or something. But she said the children and her children are fine, which, well, you know, good. there ain't, there ain't many kids in this town. So I guess she meant the orphans. Yeah, Peacock and I were talking about the orphans. You should probably go and check on them. Uh, well, where where are they usually? I mean, the kids were saying uh, John John asked where they usually play. They said the church, but uh, well, that's anywhere else where they are. They, I mean, that that's probably where they are. But uh, where where do they where do they stay? Uh, otherwise, um, uh, they ch- stay with the person who's in charge of the orphanage. Someone mm-hmm. want to give me a name about uh, for the person who's in charge of the orphanage? Mm-hmm. Male or female? Cecilia. Cecilia. Cecilia Detweiler. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cecilia Detweiler. All right. I've got it written down here. All right. Yeah. Um, they usually are stuffed into Cecilia Detweiler's place. Well, let's run there. All right. You guys go there and check her house just for the sake of time. Um, there is nothing unusual going on at the house. No one's in the house. Uh, I imagine that you break in, you confirm that no one's there, no one's dead, no clues. Okay. Right. Well, I guess the, the church church is next, right? That's the only other place we know that they go. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, sorry, boy. sorry for what you're probably about to see, Rev. Oh, I'm I'm with you guys at this point. I would imagine. I would. Yeah. yeah. I would, I would okay. Okay. Travel sure. together. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, by the way, um, I've taken less than ten steps out of uh, Madame. What's her name? Charlotte. Madame Charlotte's place. And I know I've made a huge mistake. Like I wasn't thinking straight. This book is a tremendous liability. 
I know that I have got mm-hmm. to figure out a way to get it back into Charlotte's collection without her noticing. I've done something wrong, but now's not the time and I can't deal with that right now. Sounds good. Where are you yeah. keeping it on you? It's in my coat pocket. Okay. All right. Uh, so the four of you head over to the church. Um, as you walk up towards the church, um, the, the doors to the church are shut. Um, there is a, like a small, like patio that like, you know, there's the rain, but bloody footprints are coming out of the front door and down the stairs. Um, presumably they are Juniper's footsteps. Mm. Okay. Um, I unlock the, the front doors to the church just trying not to show a hint of weakness yeah, and lead us inside. Oh boy. All right. Uh, as you head inside the, um, the, the stench of the dead, that heavy iron spe- smell of blood, <sighs> um, uh, gore and viscera fill the church. Um, Ugh. and it is just, uh, just appalling. Um, you don't like, you don't recognize people anywhere amongst all of this blood and viscera. Um, but it is obvious that there are, are many, many dead people or children in, uh, inside of this church. Um, as you all cross the threshold of the church, um, the, uh, the peacock, um, cane, uh, begins to glow ever so softly. Oh, Oh shit! Yeah, I look. I look at it very, very confused. Like, uh, you know, I think because I, in my head, I mean, we can we can retcon this if we need to. Um, my head, like, it was given to him as a gift, you know, and and uh, and so, and he knows there's. It's kind of a little bit weird, but he doesn't. You know, he's not. He's not dumb, but he's also not like he kind of accepts that there's weird things around, but he never really looks farther into them than 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 concern him. Um, but he's yeah, he's definitely, uh look at this bit a bit freaked out and i i'd also say my first thought was like you know he's somebody who's like you know gets into scrapes and everything but definitely not seen anything like this before other than you know his parents which is not uh i think isn't i don't think it's sitting well with him at all well yeah i mean moira's like kind of turns around and like wretches a little bit because she's like i mean obviously she's killed people she's seen some bodies but but not like in this configuration in horrificness yes yes this is (laughs) this is this is terrible um let's see Um, so uh i mean so the whole thing is glowing uh it is um like candlelight not like not a giant like <laughs> angelic glow or anything, but just in a, a small way. Yeah. Okay. And uh, oh man, I'm thinking. Moira like re- doubled over, still kind of is rushing. That, is like, what is what the hell does that mean? Yeah, because the gamer in me wants to go. I want to move around and see if it changes. But <laughs> but I think the but the character I don't think is gonna. I don't think he wants to step any farther into this than than. Does, it, does it glow when there's evil because no shit yeah i have no idea i've never seen this before um meanwhile the reverend has just been his gaze fixed on the scene in front of him refusing to let himself look away Aww. this is his this is his burden to bear oh and um, he okay. says to himself perhaps it's about time i stopped preaching And then he starts looking on the wall for a lantern that he can light. Zach, so what do you, Peacock? I mean, uh, real yeah, quick. I was going to say, so I what wanna, do y'all want to like... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I want to to offer you a, um, a compel. Okay. Uh, I want to offer you a compel on your... Uh, on the flaw of the arcane uh, Peacock Cane, the mm-hmm. source of power on... Yeah, the source of power unknown. Yeah. Um. Uh. And um. Oh. Um. I want to. Um. Oh goodness, what is the oh, no. compel? I'm trying to think of the right way to say it. Um. Uh, um. You have discovered the source of the peacock cane's power, which is um. Uh. Uh, which is blood. Oh. 
So would you like that compel? So, I mean, uh, like, you mean like the compel being the knowledge that that's the case? Uh, well, the compel is the, so this compel, it changes the peacock cane. So the flaw aspect was like unknown source of magic. Yeah. Um, this compel will change that to, um, uh, powered by displays of blood. I want to make it a little bit more specific. And that means kind of, I know Mm. that now. Yes. Which means that like, you know, that this is charging the peacock cane. Yeah. Um, and so you've learned a little bit more about this and this complicates your life because yeah. right now you look really sus with a cane that's glowing uh, yeah. and reacting to what's going on right here. So this is probably mm-hmm. going to be a tough situation for you. Yeah, no, I'm, but you know, I like, I like leaning into all the awfulness. So yeah, I'll, I'll take that for sure. Excellent. All right. I gave you the fate point um, and mod of, well, I guess we don't have the gear aspects listed in uh, yeah. fairy. So we'll just have to remi- remember that. They're on the character sheets. If you like open the actual yeah. sheet. Yeah. Right. Oh, but I think okay. that, I mean, I think that, you know, he knows that now, but I think that pretty, pretty well horrifies him. I mean, he, he yes. d- yeah. deals, deals, you know, he smacks people around, but that, that idea just is pretty, pretty awful to him. And that, you know, that definitely complicates what, what he wants to do with this thing. Yeah. Um, so I've got a question for Dylan. Is there anything you want to do? Well, um, at this point, I'm curious about the connections of what's going on in this church to the devil I saw in the mirror. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking um, just because I I would like to see like the mask do something. I think that would be an interesting part of the scene well the mask is powered by souls um but i do have something interesting going on or an Ooh. interesting idea for what uh can happen right now um so um john harrington i would like to offer you a compel on the devil in every silvered surface all right um, uh the compel is going to be that you are going to um uh ask peacock to inspect the cane Um, and that is going to create a particularly nasty situation. All right. Yes. All right. Uh, I give you that compel. Um, and, uh, so here's the question. Um, Peacock or, Mm -hmm. you know, John wants to examine the, examine the cane. Nothing unusual about that. Are you comfortable with that? Oh yeah. Like I, I, I want to know what's going on and I certainly don't want, like at the moment, it, it, it's you know scaring him a lot so he's happy to have somebody tell him what the heck's going on so yeah Excellent. absolutely yeah. and right over mm. all right uh so as this happens as john's hands get on the peacock cane um a uh a fiery pentagram blossoms out of the ce- in the center Damn, of the church i knew it um uh john harrington is inside the the pentagram um, and you just see an evil look go across his face. Um, oh boy. Uh, uh, at this point, um, we're going to, um, so here's the setup for this situation. Mm-hmm. So John, you are not, um, in control of yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you had the, the devil that is inside of you is, uh, working on controlling you. Okay. Um, and you are going to be able to try and, uh, we're running this, the scene as a conflict. Um, you have, you will be able to try and quote, take out the devil to regain control of your sense of self. Okay. Mm. Um, all right. The, the rest of you, um, mm. are going to, um, uh, try and talk John out of summoning whatever it is that he is going to summon or whatever he is going to do. Um, uh, and so you're going to try and talk him out of what he does. He's a friend of yours. So like shooting him really isn't the right thing to do. If you choose that, that's the right thing to do. I'm not going to stop you, but, um, but basically you're going to try and convince john to not summon or do whatever it is that that john is going to do does this make sense to everyone yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It sure does yeah. okay so i have a okay. general idea but i'd love for for thoughts on it in the book so i you know i have that that stunt that i can work and i can substitute deceive for a poor and i like the idea of like kind of 
telling some kind of pretty lie to get him out of this, but I'm not really sure what that would be. Yeah. I have, I have two that I'm thinking of invoking. Uh, number one is just impulsive to just like attempt to tackle him out of there. Um, mm. And two is I uh, spent a fate point to get a specific ammo for the gun. Cause Ooh. yeah, if I can think of what mm. I want, okay. that might so, be worth it. Excellent. So, um, so that's what I'm thinking of. John air quotes, John uh, is going <laughs> to go first in the conflict and then pass the baton around and then we'll keep things going. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so John says, uh, <laughs> um, thank you, Peacock. Uh, I've been, I've been trapped inside of this cane for so long. It's nice to have possession of faculties, even if they aren't mine. Um, kind of looks down at, uh, looks down at his body uh, and says, this is, this is adequate until I'm able to, to summon forth uh, a much better body. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so kindly. I greatly appreciate um, what you've done for me, uh, Peacock. Um, uh, I would like to um, uh, offer you something in return, Peacock. I would like to tell you more about the death of your parents. Oh, shit. Uh, so at this point, the devil is going to make a provoke roll. Um, you may defend with will. Um, yeah. uh, basically, what the um, what the devil is doing is trying to get under your skin and throw you mm -hmm. off. This is this is a social conflict. Um, and so that's why this is going to go down like this. So. um so let's uh let's see so you i'm going to roll uh my dice let's see uh, devil let me give i can add track consequence no i can't add skills boo no. that's okay um i know that that is a plus four for that so that is a six result on the provoke Great. Go ahead and defend Peacock. All right. All right. That is a two point difference between them. Do you want to yeah. take two points of stress? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that just makes sense in here. All right. I presume you're going to check two stress boxes for that. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Because I mean, I think he, you know, I mean, so with the, is the idea here that like, does Peacock know, like kind of know he's being lied to or does he believe that he could tell him something? Well, I mean, it's very believable. You're talking to, okay. to some kind of like something that isn't human. Yeah. So I think, yeah. So, so in that case, they definitely, I think would take the stress because he won. I think he just believes, you know, so. Right. Right. I'll, so I'll do that right here. Uh, so uh, I, the, uh, the devil has a stunt that allows me to spend fate points. I am the GM. I get fate points too. I just haven't spent mm. any so far tonight. Um, the stunt at the cost of a face fate point uh, a successful attack goes straight to the opponent's consequences. So please cool. absorb that with one of your consequences. Okay. Oh, shit. What's that, what's that consequence going to be then? Maybe uh, seed of doubt. Yeah. Um, oh. Uh, overwhelmed with grief if you're responding to it that way or, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. angry about sound like you wanted to death. like believe him. Yeah. I I'm sorry. Oh, I was saying, like, it, it sounds like maybe you were, like, believing him, and yeah. now you're just, like, you're doubting a little bit mm -hmm. and not really sure where you stand. Okay. How would I? I they, yeah, I'm trying to think about how to word that. Um, uh, just put, yeah. not sure where I stand. Okay. We don't have to get, we don't have to write it perfectly. Gotcha. We just have to all know and understand what it means. All right. Okay. Um, the devil is then going to uh, pass the baton to, um, you know what? I will pass it to the reverend. Is it possible to delay my turn? Uh, no, it is not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is possible for you to talk to the other players to get them to pass it to you later. But right. the, the devil is the bad over. guy. Yeah. So, right. um, so yeah. So he has control. Yep. CJ's not happy. <laughs> Obviously. This is perhaps the not happiest he's ever been. Um, so he's holding a lantern that's lit and he turns to the rest of the party 
and he says, brothers and sisters, all of us are not perfect people. All of us have been touched and tainted in some way. And he opens his coat and he drops the book that he stole from Madame Charlotte in front of him. Oh, shit. Oh, snap. It is now our privilege to decide where we stand. It is now our responsibility to decide who we will be. I want to save Brother Harrington. I believe he can be redeemed. But after we do that, we're going to burn this place to the ground. A fucking and, man. <laughs> and uh, basically, I'm going to make a provoke roll to the rest of this party which may be like a create advantage rule, but I'm basically well, tell me, telling Tell me them, what you're trying to get them to do and we'll figure out the rules. I'm trying them. to get them to grow up <laughs> and set down their like, Evil their ways. questionable life choices and artifacts and devote themselves to cleansing the world of this demonic threat. Moira? <laughs> yeah. All right. And he, um, and he does so knowing that he is in no position to judge. Mm -hmm. All right. That is a create advantage with provoke. I'm going to set the difficulty for this at a two. Um, I get a plus two to this roll because I'm compelling a group to action using the word of God. Indeed. Indeed. That is absolutely, absolutely it. Question. Yes. Since he's using it on us as opposed to a group of NPCs, can we resist? Well, the, so that's a great question. The, yeah. um, the aspect is going to be the way that I look at it, uh, is that the aspect will be created that you can either choose to use or choose not to use, okay. which sense. means that you don't have to worry about resisting it. On the other hand, if you do want to actively resist it, then the difficulty is no longer that static two. And I would ask how you're resisting it. And then we would have an opposed role yeah. as you're trying to undermine the creation of this aspect. Yeah, no, it's not I, that big. It's more like on a personal level. I was thinking the moment he saw that book, it was like, fuck this guy. Okay. Yeah, not trusting um, him, but not like, obviously, because obviously, what he's saying is like, he, he still believes in because like, obviously we have to deal with this threat here. So, and uh, yeah, no, and, and like, thing. the way I'm seeing this isn't so much like trying to coerce anyone into particular action, mm -hmm. but like giving them the strength to do so yeah. and presenting them with a very clear decision they have to make. Yeah. All right. What is the aspect that you'd like to, to create here, Josh? Um. Oh boy. Oh, oh, so, so for, I, I am going to uh, invoke God is watching you, first of all. Well, and you, don't also... you, don't, you don't have to um, because uh, you've already well, been successful. The difficulty was two and you got a three. I kind of want to succeed with style though. Is that a thing I can shoot for? Uh, you certainly can. And that's just going to transfer that free invoke from God is watching you to this aspect. And okay. a little bit of metagaming information for you is that having more aspects that can apply to the same situation, allow more entry points for fate points to be spent. Yeah. Um, whereas fewer aspects means that you can spend fewer fate points on things. It makes sense. Um, okay. So in my opinion, something like the aspect, like uh, uh, cleanse this, which is what, which is what the aspect is. I'm just going to write down for this. Yeah. Um, having cleansed this and God is watching you. Um, seem like they would being able to apply both of them to the situation as opposed to only one, you know, I, it's, it's more favorable for you from a mechanical point of view to have both of those. That makes sense. Okay. Um, okay I'll do that then. And I will call this aspect. Oh. Um, I want to call it either the devil's gone too far or uh, something about like the devil comes to collect. I think I like the devil's gone too far. All right. The, the devil's gone too far. All right. That aspect is up on the board with the free invoke. Uh, who are you going to pass to, Reverend? Um, 
I think I will pass to Moira. Why, hello. Yeah, she, yeah, she's a fucking man. I'm gonna try and get get him out of there. Um, so she is going to use a fate point to uh, look for a, I guess the best way to put it would be like exorcism bullet for her gun. The most um, self-righteous bullet in your whole bag. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. The least tolerant, angriest. Yeah. So, salt bullet to, you know, to expel the uh, the spirit of the devil out of, of her friend. Uh, and she will I mean, aim like for like the shoulder. Bullet, All right. Could be. Uh, Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to, um, real quick, I'm going to... to offer you a compel on oh no yes uh, which one uh not that let me see i'm going to offer you a compel on the devil's gone too far actually um mm -hmm. the compel is going to be that um that you pull out the appropriate bullet and you shoot it at um uh you shoot it at john harrington uh and the um uh the pentagram uh, blocks the bullet. And so shooting Oof. shooting Harrington is not going to be an option. Okay. Now, I will so tell I you- still, as a Do I still yeah. uh, spend the fate point or not? No, no. Okay. No, no. Uh, you'll, you'll gain a fate point for this back. because this is going to, to complicate your life. I'm adding a fate point now to you. Okay. Um, I, so, I kind of- I kind of narratively like just this is like me talking to Amelia, not like yeah, this, yeah. this is my decision, but like I kind of narratively like the option of like killing John Harrington being open because like that's something that CJ would be prepared to do and bear the burden for doing. Yes, but one of the things that we, that I'm trying not to set up is is killing Dylan's character. Oh, sure, that's fair. Yeah, because we, we <laughs> I know. Not, yeah. Right. I So I, so, yeah. so mine Wait, Dylan, oh, go ahead. So I actually think um, kind of the way that I intended to solve my turn, I kind of wanted to do a, a callback to the game that I was playing with the devil at the beginning. And I actually think that having John um, not killed, but shot like in, in the um, kind of would be a nice little, because the way I envision it is like, it's, um, you know, it's um, this kind of abstract scene where he's actually playing poker with the devil, and oh, when cool. he and after he wins, if he wins, assuming mm -hmm. he wins, then he kind of feels the shot. And I would say it should be in the arm. Literally, she's mm -hmm. giving him a shot in the arm, mm -hmm. and that would kind of be the the thing that jerks him back to reality. I think yeah, that's that would that's be, kind of what I was. Th yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna. Well, uh, then, spend then, the point to. Well, hold on. Well, wait a minute. Let's. Um, yes, I'm going to. Yeah. What we can do is we can kind of bring this back a little bit. I'm going to take away okay. the uh, the fate point that I gave you for the compel. What okay. we can do is um, uh, Moira can you shoot to create an aspect, like shot in the shoulder, on Harrington, that will have a free invoke. You know, provided you get over the difficulty and all of that. So that would be Moira. What you could do on your turn that would then volley up for uh, Dylan to deal with the devil. So basically, okay. you're doing what you wanted to do, which is like you pull out like a special shot um, and shoot him. Um, it, I'm not charging you the fate point for the for the okay, special I need, shot. I need, yeah, I yeah. need one back then because I okay. I spent one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna charge you for that, but basically, like you get like. It's not just a bullet, but it's a anti-possession bullet, which will help yeah. set up this scene and situation that, that's going yes, yes, up. Yes. Does that sound I'm okay like, to you? I'm kind of picturing like maybe the bullet just like hits the pentagram and slows down and is just like yeah. moving towards Dill yeah. in slow motion. Yeah, that's so badass. Okay, so roll yeah. uh shoot. Yeah, roll shoot. I'm gonna set the difficulty for this at a two. Hang. You remember at the beginning where I was like, no, I won't need shoot. I'll swap it for contacts. <laughs> I have regrets. All right. That is a tie, which on a create advantage uh, will only net a boost. Um, if you'd like to spend a fate point to make it a, a, a complete success, you may yes. do that. 
Um, I kind of think we've we've set it up for like a partial success narratively. So I think I'll leave it as a partial success because it's just not like I boost. just like yeah, because I it's not like I just like immediately yeet the devil out of him. It's it it starts to bring him back to itself. So yeah. it's a partial kind of thing. I think uh, with that awesome thing Dylan said about like actually in, in his mind seeing it the card game, I yeah. think it's narratively perfect that like in that moment you draw aces because aces are bullets. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Mm, I love yeah. that. All right, so I added a boost called Grazed by a Bullet. Um, so it will uh, it will only exist for as long as, until you use it. Um, so Moira, great job. Thank you. Uh, Peacock and John Harrington are still on deck and haven't gone. Choose one of those to go next. One uh, of them to go next. I'm going to have to go with John because he's, he's the man of the hour. All right, All right. so... Like if you were if you like kind of John is looking at at the cane and like the camera zooms in and goes into it, you know, and zooms in on his eye and you kind of see this sort of smoky room and he's, you know, and he's playing cards with the devil and and um, he's having a conversation with him. And I and he says and John starts off by saying. I wish I had known how far this would have gone all those years ago. And then, you know, you can see kind of along the way of like on the side of like where the chips would be, there's like all the stuff that he's gotten, but all of the, but the price that he had to pay basically, which was, you know, the, the, the things that he's had to swindle people out of, or not had to, but he swindled people out of, et cetera, are on the devil side. But one of the things that he, that's on his side is kind of this, it, it's actually the, the mask itself. And, um, and he puts it on, on the table for Auntie. And he says, it's time for me to cash out. Cool. So... Uh we play all right uh you will play poker against the devil this is now my question is i'm assuming this is a as an attack as you're trying to take out the devil right yes okay great so let's play poker as an attack one of the reasons why i love fate um, this is very i was gonna say this is the only system where you could do this this is so cool yes this is yes. so cool um so so john uh deceive seems like it's a good poker skill to use yes. here right so um, that sounds good. Uh, so the devil, uh, the devil is going to get a plus five to uh, to poker, and my roll is oh, what a nasty roll! I got three nulls or three negatives. Wow. Um, that I do not like. That gives me a result of two. Uh, what do you, what do you get, uh, John Harrington? So. I have just, I'm going to spend a fate point to invoke past time I cashed out. Well, no, first make the roll to find out what the difference All right. is first. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you spend after the roll. Fair enough. All right. You got to just feel so good to go all in first. Now I will tell you because I'm feeling particularly kind. I'm spending a fate point to re-roll because three negatives statistically I can roll better. Because three negatives and four negatives are like very much statistical outliers. Um, Mm -hmm. And so the um, uh, let's see, the devil is going to spend a uh, uh, spend on to get a reroll. You know what? I'm going to spend one of my fate points on the aspect. God is watching you. Um, because John, you have not lived a good life. You have not done good things. Um, and God is not on your side. Uh, I'm going to get a reroll. There is a minus one on the dice, which is much better. That brings it to a six result against your, uh, you got a zero. Well, zero plus the C is four. So that is a, yeah. So that is a, um, two point difference. Uh, or I'm sorry, that is a defense. The devil does not take any stress. Well, just Unless, a moment. Yeah, yes. So I intend to invoke time to cash out. And I'm also going to invoke grace by bullet. All right. Where 
where I play the where I where basically as I hold up my cards, I realize I have all four aces in my hand. Oh, cool. All right. Spend your fate point. That is four points up, taking you to an eight. All right. Uh, I'm going to give the devil a mild consequence. First, I'm going to remove the grazed, grazed by bullet boost because it's been used and is now gone. Um, and I'm um, and I am going to. Oh, it's not registering my face anymore, is it? In Zoom. Yeah, you're Ooh. you're you're just um the the Nazgul or whatever just yeah. still <laughs> just darkness. Yeah. Oh. yeah. It's on. okay. All right. He's gone too well, far. He's never coming back. I've gotten uglier <laughs> now. Uh, all right. Uh, and I'm going to uh, provide so the bad guy, can I add aspects to it? Consequence. I absolutely can. All right. So I'm going to add pissed off to the devil. Um, you hold up those three cards. Um, your attack does two points of stress uh, and the devil is just just angry just kind of like takes his hand and swipes at the table knocking everything off to the floor the mask goes flying and everything and it's just like you are nothing without me john harrington you owe everything that you have everything everything that you have is because of me without no. me you have nothing absolutely nothing no no that's not true at all i came into this mess I can get myself out of it. I don't need you anymore. All right. Who goes next, Harrington? Um, I guess it's actually Peacock because Peacock's the yeah, only one Peacock. who's available. So what what can what do we see happening on the outside? So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna say is like you can kind of see like kind of my eyes to return from being kind of like a possession state and they've and and they've come back. Um but yeah, and right now John is holding the peacock cane in his hand. And he's about to break it open. Basically, he's about to smash it. Yeah. Okay. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, I my original thought was like telling pretty lies to try to encourage him to like that this guy the devil's in as powerful as he thinks it is. But if now I'm thinking he wants to bust that thing open. Um, I, well, well, John will do that, and then his eyes return back to to devilish, and holds the peacock or holds the cane, and it's like no, 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 no. Um, oh, okay, so, you know, so you can go back to your original thought. Like I like where you were going, Dylan, but mm -hmm. that is a that would be that leads to a great compel for Peacock. Um, but I don't think we need any compels right now. You guys have too many fate points. Um, so, so if I'm speaking, I'm speaking like what, it's the devil here, and may not Dylan. I mean, not, not, uh, John. not John. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, geez. Okay. Well, that changes things. Um, okay. I know we're wrap. We gotta get wrap up here. So I'm thinking, uh, yeah. so any, yeah. any, if anybody want to chip in on here, I'm thinking like, what could I, what, what could I wake? And I try to like deceive the devil, <laughs> I guess. Uh, or I don't even know, or what other approach I, oh, I'm kind I thought of, of something. Um, I thought of something. Okay. You could take, so this is like, this is, a thing you'd have to choose. This is kind of like a big character defining moment. Yeah. You could take the book and try to burn it. I think that would be such an, in, like this book is so evil that it would be such a potent decoy. It could draw the devil's attention away from John. Oh shit. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, I think my, my initial inclination was to say he's, he's, you know, he's pissed off at the ref for doing it, but he doesn't have any personal investment in it besides this. And he obviously he's in a situation where everybody's going to die. So he's like, got to decide. Yeah. It's the hard yeah. choices. So I think, yeah, I think he, I, yeah. So I think that's a good one. I, I just, so I think Peacock just, he just, he just picks that, that book up from where it fell, kind of gives the rev a real sh shitty look um, and then uh, chucks it into the flames. And as our eyes meet, you see like genuine compassion and guilt. Right. I say I don't know. I say I'm trying to think of something clever to say. But I just like, look really sorry. Like I like boom, just chuck it in there. So I don't know. What does that think. what does that translate to fate skill wise? Um uh, uh 
I'm going to say athletics as you're trying to get it on the fire. Okay. As you're trying to like toss it on. Well, I mean, well, shoot, there's a, there's a lit lantern that I left behind. And I kind of, I'm kind of talking establish we want to, we want to like, oh yeah, actually yes, because oh. we kind of established we want to set this place ablaze. So I say I'll take the lantern, smash the lantern on the ground. Assume it's an oil lantern, yeah, and yeah. just kind of spreading an initial fire and then toss the book in it. So kind of trying to kind of kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. Set this, you know, set the church on fire and. Uh, I tell you what, you're you're trying to like smash it down. I'll let you. This is a weird fight roll because there's no skill in there. So go ahead okay. and make a make a fight roll. All right. Maybe it's like I mean, will maybe I don't know. Got a plus three. Uh, all right, plus three. Um, let's see. The devil is going to defend. Um, the devil will defend with a three. Uh, three minus one is a two. So uh, two against your three is a one stress hit. Um, do you want to use any of the aspects that are out there or spend any fate points? Because right now you've got yeah, a one stress hit. What, yeah, so what do we got? Um, devil's gone too far. I, yeah, yeah. I think that's a pretty clear one. Yeah, um, that makes it three stress. And uh, I don't know, I'd say I could spend a fate point. I think, you know, first sweet, then sour. I think he's turned sour for sure. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, you can do that. You can also, I mean, God is watching you seems to to play into it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, that would definitely. So, yeah, let's lay them all on there. All yeah. right. Uh, so you spend your fate spend, point and then you yeah. spend those two free invokes. That makes the, it the one plus, plus six, a seven stress hit. <laughs> um, so that is a quite a big hit. Um, and, uh, because we are, are at time, uh, I will say that the, um, uh, that yeah. seven stress hit oh. two, four, six, that is enough to take out the devil. Oh, For now. So, I had one yes. more thing I wanted to For do. Now. It was going to be so um, cool. I know we were yeah, going somewhere really time. good with this. If we had another hour, yeah. we could do something even more amazing, but, uh, yes. Yeah. So, so Peacock, you slam down that, um, you toss the book onto the fire. Um, the devil, uh, that's in there just kind of like recognizes the book and says, no. And as, and as John Harrington kind of like jumps for the book, um, you watch as John's body heads towards the book, but then the, this like, like ghostly apparition form that like, you can't really describe what it looks like, except that it kind of like just emanates evil, just kind of like pulls off of him. Um, and uh, the uh, the peacock cane stops glowing uh, and John is back to himself. And the church is lit on fire. And church on fire. <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 let's try let's drag him out of here and we can yeah, figure sorry, this yeah, shit out later. Yeah, yeah. Drag him out. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Yeah, and and more would just kind of be like uh, that seemed like it went too easy. Is he really gone? I yeah, guess that's a problem for another time, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, um I think the the shimmering mask should burn up in the um burn up yeah in the, um, <laughs> in as the, far as we're aware yeah. <laughs> well here's the here's the question dylan do you want to um if you want to keep the shimmering mask we can do that or you can use this as a moment to get rid of the shimmering mask and make a big character change because mm. you because that would get you back your like the stunt you spent on a gear like you're getting rid of your gear, which is cool. And then we'd have to kind of like come up with something to replace that. Um, so the question is, what do you want to do? Well, um, so a lot of that depends on like, cause I'm not exactly sure um, how many more sessions we're going to have. Yeah. I, um, I don't know if we're even going to have another one, but I just want to yeah. um, uh, mention example, that I guess, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like you could choose at this point to be like, okay, the shimmering mask goes away. I don't like where this is going. John Harrington, we're going to start kind of uh, a different story for him. Or you can say, I still have the shimmering mask. Um, and, um, you know, uh, the devil has been defeated in this situation, but it's still yeah. a problem for you. So I guess my thoughts are, I, 
I personally am okay with like, because one of the things I was thinking of in the future is that it could come back, you know? Yeah. And, um, but I'm okay with it being burned up and like, this is the start of John trying to, you know, distance himself from that, that life that yeah. he lived before. Yeah. And like, maybe you're leaving and you turn back and see this inferno raging and you like throw the mask in. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I throw the and mask like, you know, maybe Perfect. maybe that's a not enough to destroy it. Maybe it's like a turn Jumanji around, thing slow motion, walk away, it. flames behind. <laughs> yeah. All right. But Great. yeah. Sure. So um, one last thing before we um, we wrap up, um, which is that like, so as you guys, like you make sure that the church burns down successfully. Um, you it's a weird all, thing to say. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so you just having a bad day. Of, yeah. Um, as day. the as the the church is embroiled in fr- in flames, uh, the rain turns into an ordinary rain um, and begins washing away the blood uh, off the town. Um, uh, there's a like you guys all have kind of like a, a palpable like sigh of relief, um, and uh, you guys are kind of like walking to go and like get a beer or get some food or something like after all of this, you're kind of like looking to unwind your, your shawarma moment, if you will. Yeah. Um, and as you do this, you pass by the, like the general store. Um, John, you look in the mirror in front of the general store and you see yourself and you are just like overjoyed to like see your own reflection for the first time in a long time. Uh, and you are incredibly happy. And then you guys kind of like walk off um, to, to go and get food. Uh, and the camera kind of zooms in on like the reflection of you guys walking away. Um, and there, like a half step behind John Harrington is the devil. Just ah! a half step behind him. <laughs> oh, I knew so, it. Yeah, ain't going out that easy. No, no absolutely not. And apparently, and I'm probably going to have to, you know, he's going to be pissed off at me too. <laughs> <laughs> he's pissed off at all of us. He'll be back. All right. So um, I would like to do what I usually do at the end of sessions, which is to, it's kind of like roses and thorns or wishes and dreams, stuff like that. Something that you Isn't like it? wish had happened or something that you really enjoyed happening uh, in today's session. So um, whoever would like to go first can feel free to do so. Uh, um, oh, yeah, go. Uh, so I think the session was like amazing. I had a great time. Things I loved. The devil was incredible. <laughs> so just like well presented. I, I want to, yeah. I mean, I'm sure we can talk in the Discord about how you did that, like just the, the effects mm-hmm. and stuff. But yeah, uh, cool. I really loved how the like morality themes in this campaign were developed because those themes are very delicate and hard to tackle. And I thought mm-hmm. we did an incredible, very mature, thoughtful job of going about that. Um, I loved that uh, we got to meet a lot of interesting characters with a lot of very tense relationships and uh, explore a lot of ambiguity. And like, that was just cool. Um, I mean, obviously, I wish I could have taken like one more turn. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think all yeah. of us do. Yeah. Maybe that's just time. But like, I, I think uh, I, I don't even view this necessarily as a thing that didn't happen that should have more of like a I'm excited that it's moving in this direction. And like, this is a, a cool thing that would probably happen in the future is just that it's it's cool to have opportunities for characters to change. And like, it's mm-hmm. really cool that there is like almost this moment of like, for lack of a better word, the Reverend getting to kind of convert people and just be like, are you guys going to make a big change? Like, I, you know, not in like any overt religious terms, but just like, are you guys going to change? And like fate gives you the tools to be like, yeah, my character is going to make a big change right now. Cool. Yeah. No, I, 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 I love this session. Yeah, my, my really my only thing is like, I wish we had more time and I wish yeah. like, as I put in the discord, like I wish this was a campaign or like a short, uh, yeah. like a short art campaign or something. Like, I just, I'm like, oh no, we have to end. I don't want to end. <laughs> I want to do more. <laughs> I yeah, feel no, the like, same way. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yeah, yeah, like I, I like this system. All of you are, are wonderful. All of our characters are really fun and interesting. I like that they're, uh, both because of the system and because of how we've we've made everybody, there's like good and bad to everybody, and it's it, it was really interesting uh, to get more into that aspect. Like the battles aspect of it is is very fun in, in Fate, but like yeah, like to get into more of like their personality this time was really really fun, and 
role playing. So yeah, yeah, no, I I loved it. It was great. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, kudos to you, Dylan. I love that uh, the the flavor you gave to that, like the bookending it with the poker game. That's just like yeah, that was straight great. out of oh, great TV. So you great. know, like that was so good. That was a good really idea. Great. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. So I yeah, I, and I love the uh, adding the yeah. You're welcome. The, I loved um, the yeah adding all the moral stuff to it too because I kind of went into both these sessions with like you're know, thinking of Peacock as a very you know straightforward like charmer bruiser kind of you know person and like and having it like and then what you throw in these compels at me and all these other even not compels but just things that are complicating is like because of the story you know now i'm like i'm thinking about this guy's like okay now he's kind of like he's he's gonna be pissed off charlotte for having burned her book he's pissed off the devil he doesn't like the he's he's does he pissed off at the at the rev like he's it's just like i mm. love there's all these layers of complexity that weren't there a day ago in his life you know and that's really fun to, to play with and also just watching you all of you guys you're just like just fun to watch as players awesome dylan well um i yeah i love this session um this is the first time in a long time that i've had a character that had like a real arc and i was so thrilled that i got to do that um in two uh, sessions it took two sessions yeah it, it it's it was i also love playing with everyone um i think there was a lot of great moments where characters could bounce off of each other and it was um something that i think worked really well especially like given how sometimes i've seen cases where it's like do we know what will mesh well with other characters but we we seem to work pretty well together that was really great um again like everyone else has said it's just i wish we had more time i wish we had more sessions i was like this is great i love this excellent yeah i i had a great time um i prepped a lot of things i used almost none of it huh. um, wow. and but that's okay wow. that's i so my style of prep so as a gm i like to have a lot of things kind of like loaded and ready to go yeah. and then um bring them into play based on what's going on so all of the prep work that i did helped me do that so like all of the locations around town understanding like what the motivations were behind these different groups um and and different things like you know elizabeth harrington like what what was she about like we didn't get to that that's okay like that's a like earmarked as future stuff. Um, mm -hmm. My, my favorite thing about tonight's session was the, um, the fake out of a and B plot. Yeah. Um, that was so cool. I that was, was like, beautiful. Oh, the so, B plot's gone. And now it's like, no, the B plot is the A plot. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It like, um, and I mean, it, yeah, it was great because like the thing is, is the, the situation that the banker was setting up was a real situation that, you know, we could have planned like run through, like my thought on the, like the stage coach was like, she's going to hire you guys to basically like find this stuff and you're going to run a con against the stage coach to try and get it out. You're going to try and heist it, you know, um, uh, which could still happen, but you know, I'm like, I've got that. If they go that way, I've got this other thing. If they go another way. Um, and so like, I knew that I wanted a, a, a demon or a devil in today's session, obviously because of the <laughs> prep work I did, but um, I wasn't sure how I was going to use it. And then Dylan was just like, yeah, so there's a devil and I see a devil in every mirror and I'm like, Oh well, shit. Now I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> um, and so I got to use it. So that was that I liked. Um, you're all excellent players. Like it's, you guys have all said that, but you guys are all great. Um, I of course want to keep this going. So who knows what I'll end up choosing um, just because it's a lot of fun. Oh, I just, um, I also wanted to say yeah. it, it says a lot about your like skill and flexibility as a GM yeah. that you had kind of a basic skeletal framework for the session and went in and like, as things were developing and as, as we brought our own creative ideas to the table, you could read the current and pivot into a completely different story that says a lot and and yeah that's cool i'm really impressed i have a question for you randy on that front like yes. so was was the moment when you uh when you had the rain come down and kind of said okay i'm i'm canceling this this offer was that the kind of the moment where you decided like okay, i'm more i'm diverting the attention 
to the to the orphans and to that kind of plot or or did you have other thoughts there kind of just work kind of behind the screen kind of sure question. sure so um so early on in the session today um i because what i wanted is i wanted to have a good like a climactic ending to the session um, and I was just like, I have no idea what that's going to be. And so I've got to kind of like, let's start playing and start figuring out what's going on as things are going on. Like the Reverend and everyone is really interested in these orphan kids. And so I'm like, all right, I got to work the orphan kids in. Um, so what are we going to do with them? And we killed them. <laughs> yeah. right. no, what am kidding. I going to do with these orphans? Said the GM. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just yeah. Kidding. Yeah. No. Um, no. and so, um, so I'm just like, okay. Uh, and, um, whenever the, once we got to the point where I had the rain come down, I realized that like, okay, I have to start the, the conclusion, the, the climax here. I have to start it now. And, um, uh, the banker closing her book and leaving, um, narratively it made sense because it's like it's raining blood that's an ill omen she knows that miss charlotte is tied into supernatural things but you know doesn't know like presumably doesn't know any more than that um it starts raining blood while she's trying to strike a deal with someone who's known for like supernatural things um and like she's just like no this just doesn't feel right to me like i'm out you know like um if you were to try and, and do something shady and something felt didn't feel right um, and you could get out of it, you might opt to get out of it. That was that was what I was going for with her decision there. Um, you deciding to follow her, I was just like, OK, so I will have the people who follow her encounter uh, like Juniper, who is coming back from having fed, like tried to feed the orphans and discovered what was going on to try and route you collectively to the orphans. Um, but to Move do so, you know, yeah, but to, yeah, but to do so in a way that wasn't me saying like, just go to the fucking church, um, <laughs> but instead to inspire you, to manipulate you like a good GM does to go there. So, mm. um, so yeah, that was, that was it. And the thing is, is like, as you're like layering on things, I'm like, okay, so you're going to go talk to the barber surgeon. I'm like, well, shit, what am I going to do there? Like I already gave you like the information that the blood rain means that like something's trying to come through. I'm like, yeah, okay. sorry. I didn't even, I didn't know what to do with it. Like I was just like, doesn't okay, matter. That's my, rain. that's, that's my problem, not yours. Um, and so I decided like, okay, I'm going to present it differently. So the books that the Reverend read said that this is a summoning while the barber surgeon says that something is trying to tear through into this world. Um, what that does is set up that perspective, you know, like how different people can have different perspectives on the same thing. So, um, and then um, I had a chance to like present some of the character of the barber surgeon, which I didn't really have any character for, which is why you didn't get very much. Um, but I did like set up a suspicious moment with that Nick that the barber yeah. did while shaving you, you know, because now it's like, well, shit, does the does the you, does the barber have something on me? Are you all does fans of the Adventure Zone? Yes. So it made, made me think of Garfield and Magnus. Yeah. 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 And so, also, I think it's yeah. interesting that like there's still a lot of unanswered questions. Like we know what was going on, not sorry, what was going on, but not who did it. Like we don't know who actually right. did right. this thing in the church that was for this purpose. We understand. Yes, and I intentionally didn't have like anyone there because I wanted to like um, to do that. One of the things that I do as a GM is I will like leave myself cookies in sessions mm -hmm. where I'm just yeah. like, I'm like, Hey, this is a really great hook. Isn't it? No one knows what's going on, but I'm the GM. So I always know what's going on, except I don't, uh, <laughs> I'm just leaving myself, uh, something that I can kind of come back to and say like, Oh, awesome. This thing's cool. Um, like for instance, right there at the end, having the devil, a half step behind John Harrington, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in future sessions, like great ending. We could oh, just yeah. not, we could never bring that up again. Like, and and it would be it's just an fun. ominous creepy thing hey yeah. oh, well, when is he gonna come back we don't know yeah is exactly he? yeah 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 because like um in an in a future in in what would be the next session um you know i wouldn't want to deal with that devil at all because we've really focused on it here but instead to mm -hmm. like 
move it around to focus somewhere else. But yeah, like you as a GM, like leaving those little questions unanswered, like who did that at the church? Uh, I can tell you as a GM, I have no idea. I just know that I wanted this situation to happen. So, um, you know, in the future, I can make something up that that happened. You know, I've got some mental ideas, but I don't have a definitive like, oh, well, you know, it was so and so. Yeah, just another thing that I thought was really cool is just that like the stakes were horrifyingly high. And we also got a really satisfying payoff too. That was very cool. Like you didn't like deny us the big win that like was cathartic and like important, but there's still these like gigantic narrative emotional consequences. Like CJ is a broken person now. Like that's just, this is like a permanently scarring experience that like changes him. And I think everyone, everyone's been changed from what happened. And that's like so cool and so good that like we have the tools to make that happen in game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Peacock knows or has an idea that this devil might have known something about um, the mysterious death of his parents. Yeah. You know, Um, uh, Moira's relationship with the sheriff. Um, There's like a little bit of a question mark there. It was fairly minor. Um, but we invented that relationship, which is a really good thing to, to kind of carry forward. And, Mm -hmm. and John obviously had a big, like changing session. So like there was, we crossed a lot of miles. Yeah. Yeah. We did. Yeah. Surprisingly so. Yeah. Ah, it was great. Thanks everybody. All right. Thank Thank you. you I think we're done. Thanks Randy and everybody. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good one. Yeah. You too. Bye.